Hey everybody, happy Thursday. Welcome to the Keep On Wrenching live stream. Good to be here, man. We got a little bit of an ice storm earlier in Michigan and uh, now we've got snow. I think we've got about four or five inches on the ground now. We're supposed to get another four more and it's a coming down. So hopefully, hopefully the ice uh, didn't build up on the lines and our internet is strong and the stream's looking good. Welcome to the stream. Happy Thursday night. Got myself a two-hearted ale. I'm gonna celebrate. And we are going to dive into motor on that CB77 Superhawk 1967 with, I think, like a 64 front end. Something's up on that, but isn't that a beautiful bike? Back behind there is the, uh, what is that, uh, CL125S hanging out there. We've been working on that one on the stream. Tonight, though, project-wise, I think what we're going to be working through, I'm going to lap the valves on this bad boy right here. Everything's ready to go. I think the lighting should be better on the stream. I uh, upgraded. I'll have to show you this later. I can't look at the light though because it'll actually make me blind. Super, super bright. Um, lap the valves, I think, tonight on this bad boy. And then what we can also do is I got my pistons all cleaned up. I actually got all the piston rings off of these. So we can go ahead and install the rings on the pistons uh, for the uh, Superhawk. Let me see. Let's hop over. Let's take a close look at the Super Hawk, or let me give you a little walk around. Lots of progress has been made. Worked my way through the wiring. Check this out. The damn thing lights up now. We got high beam, low beam. That's really all there is for lights, minus the tail light back here. That's about it. And then we got a little horn as well, too. So um, kind of cool just to see the thing lit up and working. Um, yeah, lots, lots to do on it yet. Uh, but it all really ultimately is coming down to getting to this thing. Man, this thing is nasty. Patrick, welcome to the stream. Long time no see, everyone. Yeah, I've been going. I've been, you know, I haven't been doing this every week. Things have gotten a little bit crazy here lately, but uh, we're back and it's all good. Kind of taking our leisurely pace. Doc Jones is in. Doc, saw some videos from you on YouTube. Good stuff. Good stuff, fellow YouTuber. Um, still got a lot of work to do on this thing. Holy crap. This light is super bright over here. I ended up getting, how can I show this to you? Maybe it'll work. I got one of those as seen on TV garage lights <laughs> and I plugged that into the little light receptacle. I'm telling you this thing, this thing is bright and it's, uh, it's, it's pretty impressive. Uh, over here, check this out. So gasket surfaces, all like the really terrible work has been going on, all right? Gaskets were actually really kind of a piece of cake on this thing. And look, and take a look at these parts. This was just degreased, um, degreased, and I wiped it down with a 3M pad. And like, look at the surfaces are absolutely beautiful, but God, I don't even know if I need to paint this. I don't even know if I need to paint this, man. Like, look how nice these parts came out. Look at the top cover. Top cover, flawless. All I did was degrease and clean. I mean, it was a hell of an effort. <laughs> don't get me wrong, um, you know, of cleaning this. But look at how beautiful that is, okay? Um, gasket surfaces all came out really, really nice. So moving pretty quick towards fully understanding this 305 and uh, just starting to go for rebuild. But man, I don't know. I, I, I can't paint that. I'm not going to paint that. No way. No way. This is freaking absolutely beautiful. Um, we do have the cylinders honed. Um, so those are ready to go. Tough to show you on it. Um, and even the fins are cleaning up okay. I mean, look at this. Though. I, I still got to do another another effort on this, but uh, this actually came out pretty damn clean. Um, cylinders don't look terrible at all. I think I'm gonna be good to go, but again, look at those gasket surfaces. Gasket surfaces, <laughs> dreading that. And most of these, all except like maybe two of them, really fought me along the way. It was like almost like peeling a, uh, like a, a sticker off of a, off of a bumper or something. It came off really, really simple. And I'm just kind of working my way through everything and everything's over here on the shelf. So I think what I will end up doing on these, these side covers, these main covers, um, I've got these all down to aluminum. I think what I'm gonna do is I'll, I will paint these um, with, uh, with high temp heat aluminum paint because that's how they were. 
Um, I don't think I'm gonna do like the, the rest of the engine bits though. I don't think I'm gonna do this stuff because it's cleaning up so good, but we will have that painted side cover, which is, you know, that's, that's how they were for the most part, but everything's cleaning up so good. I've got one, one more cover to polish here, but this one should go really, really quick. We might dive into that. Doc Jones, right? Super clean, right? Super clean. Yeah, don't forget about super clean. I will say super clean is a major contributor to getting all this stuff as clean as it is. So uh, shout out to super clean. Um, big fan of their products, man. Big, big, big fan. I actually just bought another gallon of their stuff. Um, so yeah, we're working through it. Um, luckily, oh yeah, look at this. Oh my God. So like here's the other side cover here. I don't need to paint. I'm, I'm not painting this. I'm just going to leave it alone, but man, that's pretty, that's really pretty right there, man. <laughs> Absolutely loving it. I will say this, um, the motors come apart a hell of a lot easier than they do going together um, because I absolutely have no clue what I'm doing with this 305. And uh, some, a few of the members of the Keep On Wrenching group have reached out, um, left some comments or sent some emails saying, hey dude, if you run into any problems, um, you know, hit me up because I've done done some of those and I can help you out. It's, it's quite different. It's a quite different deal um, from the 350s, which I'm pretty confident um, with, with what I can do with one of those. So I think tonight the big goal is going to be valves and piston rings. So I think that's kind of the deal. People rolling into the chat. Um, very good to see everyone. Patrick, uh, life has been pretty busy for me, so I've missed a bunch of streams. No worries, man. No worries. Um, it's kind of everything's getting back to normal, right? And I'm definitely feeling it. Um, you know, on the on the work side, gonna have some travel coming up again, which I haven't traveled in forever. So uh, yeah, everything's coming back. But uh, good stuff. Let me see. I gotta link up my browser here because I know I'm gonna need it, and I just forgot to sync up my browser window. So let me go ahead and get this thing going. Let's see, how can I do this real quick? Whoa, there's my Streamlabs. There's that. Oh, come on. It's gonna make me go through this whole darn thing again, isn't it? It is gonna make me do all of this stuff here. Give me one second here. Uh, doop -a doop -a do Window capture. We'll delete this one. I'll go and grab another window capture. Window capture, add source, increase, bring new. Boom, boom. I'm getting pretty good at this stuff. I'm feeling pretty good, but why isn't my browser showing up? Why isn't my browser showing up? That's kind of annoying. Because we're gonna need it tonight, guys. We are going to need um, the browser tonight. I can guarantee you, because we're gonna be looking up a bunch of parts. We're gonna be trying to figure all this stuff out. If I'm without a browser tonight, that's gonna be brutal. That is gonna be a brutal, brutal deal. Let me see. I'm gonna try it one more time. If it doesn't go, I'm gonna have to move on with my life. I don't see it popping up. Oh man, that's a bummer. That's a bummer, that's a bummer when this freaking browser thing doesn't work. So I'm just gonna to have to remember that as we move through. Tula Tom's in on the stream. Sweet, good to see you, Tula. Tula, you might need to make a house visit one of these days here because uh, could use an extra set of, set of eyes, an extra set of eyes maybe on the 305. So like I said, I think it's valves, piston rings tonight. It's gonna to be kind of cool, kind of leisurely. I don't think we'll be getting too dirty. If we like march right through that, we'll, we'll hop over and we'll start uh, degreasing the motor and getting things going. But I'm telling you, I'm blown away. I am absolutely blown away by how clean this motor is coming out. Um, this lighting right here is like way, 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 way better. Way better than it was before. It's a little hot over the main workstation, but it's pretty good here. But yeah, that is looking pretty darn good. There was one bent fin. Where was it? There was one bent fin that I might try to tackle right here. But I'm a little concerned about it because if you dive in on it, see it's cracked. See it crack right there? Ouch, that is uh, gonna be really tedious to try and actually bend it back. So what I think I might try, you wanna just try and do this? I've been kind of procrastinating this. What I was thinking about doing was heating this up, heat it up really good with the propane torch a little bit, just propane, and then just kind of gently get underneath there with a small flat, maybe, maybe, a, maybe a spatula or something, get underneath there and lift that up. I'd hate to break it off, it's actually pretty deep too. It goes back a good, 
goes back a good inch. See that? Tough to show you this stuff. Right there. Yeah, you can see it back in there. Cracked all the way over there. Should we try it? I mean, live dangerously, right? I've been kind of procrastinating. I saw this crack. I didn't even notice like how far back that was going. So any recommendations before I go and just kind of dive into this? Any recommendations to try and, and, and get that straight? I was thinking heating it up would be the way to do it. Heat it up a little bit and then try to get like kind of just the right tool in here to lift it up. Maybe we put a little bit of a spacer um, in the top edge to make sure that it doesn't go up. I think that might work pretty well too. Oops, let's go. Let me grab a little, little piece of wood. Maybe this little chunk of wood here will actually fit right inside of here, I don't know. Just a little too thick, a little too thick. Wish I had a little thinner piece. That would be perfect just to kind of hold that into position. Yeah, well, it's gotta go up, right? So I, I think I gotta get it. Or are you saying get underneath the whole fin dock? Blow it somehow. All right, well, I got something. Let me see, let me poke around here. We, 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 we're gonna figure this out. It's been just kind of like this little eyesore that I've been kind of like, what the hell? Why, why's it gotta be like that? And I was thinking I've got a really sturdy flat edge. Oh wow, it kind of just kind of wanted to go there already. I do feel like I should heat it up a little. It's really just kitty wumpus right here Oh God, that's tedious, makes my heart kind of skip a beat a little bit. It's not going up, it's already a little bit better from my perspective. Yeah, but it's on that edge. I gotta get in underneath there with something else. What can I use, what can I use? What can I use? Getting busy right away. I wonder if just like a, the proper sized drill bit, maybe that would work. So I want to keep it, I, I really want to just hit that one end and bend it up just a hair. Mm, I could go a little bit bigger than that. That. Oh, that's really close. Maybe something like, there we go. That's, I think that's the ticket right there. And that actually supports that right over that crack. And then I might be able to just support it like this and then just kind of eke that little edge up. What do you think? Should we go for it? Tom, yep, that would have worked too. Um, they're a little thick though. It's pretty narrow um, up on there. Do you think I should heat it up? That's, that's my question. Is that even necessary to heat it up a little bit? Get some gloves on. That would work and it kind of lays right along that edge there. I can even kind of cram that in there. I just need to get up on that just a little bit. Oh, thinking, thinking, thinking. What could we use on something like that? Got, I got brand new sets of uh, flathead screwdrivers. I do have some of these now. I wonder if I can get underneath this just enough. Huh. <laughs> It's got a little curve on the camera. It looks like it's still crooked, but it's actually not. I think I actually just might have got it close enough for me. Actually, it's damn near perfect. I'm going to go up just a little more. Oh, there. On this edge, it's flat. It's good. Yeah, here, look. On the, I can see on the camera it doesn't look like it, but... You look at it from this edge, we just totally fixed that. We just totally fixed that just like that. Didn't even heat it up or anything. It's just kind of sitting there. I don't think we did any damage to that. Looks nice and smooth, good enough. I'm gonna just leave that alone and call it good. <laughs> That's, I think I'm not gonna push my luck anymore on that. That was a lot easier than I thought. A lot easier than I thought, so we're off to a good start tonight. Thought that would take me a half hour to work my way through, so gonna be a short stream tonight. I'm gonna run out of projects.
What y'all been working on, man? I know it's tough in the winter to get out and work on stuff, but uh, you're working on stuff? Have you gone to keeponwrenching.com yet and got your free sticker? I ran out of printer ink. Listen to this. So I was trying to do all the stickers. I think it was last weekend. Last weekend, I was trying to get the stickers out. And um, one, the printer was out of ink, so I didn't have that. And then um, the other thing was I was out of envelopes. So my envelopes will be here on Saturday and the printer ink arrived yesterday. All the labels are printed. Um, they're all ready to go. I just need the envelopes and I'll get those out in the mail. So if you haven't, if you haven't gotten your uh, Keep On Wrenching sticker yet, uh, make sure to go to keeponwrenching.com URL down there in the lower left. Go and do that. And then we are at, where are we at? 9,793 subscribers. So by the weekend hopefully we're to the last 200 we need 200 to get the channel to 10,000. so if you're not subscribed yet make sure that you get into that and uh get on it man road to 10,000. tom i'm actually really surprised that it was that easy as well you know I, i've been putting that off i didn't i just didn't want to break it but good enough good enough moving on so valves I want to see if I can get a couple of camera angles going here because this is going to be kind of a tricky one tonight um, to film or to live stream, I should say. Live streaming is a completely different animal um, from, from, the, uh, from the video making. The, the, uh, the live stream is a little bit more limiting. You don't have that um, editing power, <laughs> you know, to get out rid of the mistakes. So you're just kind of rolling with it. Man, this thing is clean. I love it. I love it. Paul, WV, been restoring a 75 CB 550. Man, she was rough. Last license in 85. You're saving one, man. You're saving one. Awesome. Daniel, hi, Brian. Uh, waiting for my sticker for my CB 100. Daniel, if you, if you put it out there, I think December 20th or something was the last time I actually sent them out. You should be in the mix. I will double check. Daniel Dundas, I will get that over to you. Tom, I learned a big lesson waiting too long to apply clear over base coat on fenders and side covers. Now I get to do them over again. Clear did not adhere. That sucks. That sucks, man. Um, were you using uh, the 2K? Or was it like, a, were you using an acrylic? Or what were you using on that to, to have that issue? That's happened to me. I've actually had the clear coat shrink a little bit on me and it developed cracks that way. Um, and since that day, I have done nothing but use the 2K Clear uh, Spray Max. So that's good. Got a little lazy here. Not going to lie. Not going to lie. I got a little lazy on this. I haven't cleaned this all out yet. But I do just want to go ahead and get these valves lapped. Um, so if you remember, I believe we took this all apart on the live stream, if I remember right. So I did go ahead and make like a little template so I know what valve was where and where it was. Oh, that sucks that you uh, can of. 2K clear, I uh, got to, uh, I'm sorry, man, I'm sorry. You gotta get that clear going. Um, yeah, but usually, I don't know, I guess I usually wait like a half hour, 45 minutes or until it's really dry. It just depends on the weather and the humidity and all of that. Daniel, I will get you that sticker, don't worry. So I do have this labeled exhaust side and I got my intake side, so both of those or all of those are hanging out. We should be good. Do this. I've got a little bit of Marvel Mystery Oil. And the first thing that you want to do on this is, let's see, yeah, I really need to get this camera over here and then we'll go down like this. Like what's kind of a bummer on the live stream is I don't really have much of a zoom. So I can't really zoom on things. Not like with my, 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 when I'm shooting videos and stuff, I can like zoom into exactly what I want. So what I want to test first is whether or not these valve guides are good. Um, Cause then if I got to do the valve guides, then, then that totally blows. <laughs> then this thing becomes even more and more and more of a project here. So, all right, valve guides. Here's how I learned how to do it. And I learned it from the 350 uh, Honda Twins book. Uh, that's how they, they described it in the book. So I'm gonna go ahead and just try that same method uh, today. So here we go, here is my exhaust side. This is my exhaust left, I guess is what it would be. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my exhaust valve right here. 
I'm really I'm just trying to just stay really organized. There are some extra bits and pieces on these, um, on the 305, than maybe you might be used to otherwise. Let's see, there we go. That's a little bit better view. And how, you, how we do this is our valves go in from this side. Let me see, how am I gonna show you this? It'd be, God, I wish my button box was over here a little bit better. For this purpose, I think this will work out just fine though. Right here. So our valve guide down inside the top here. And we've got our valve that's gonna slide in there. Now the one thing you don't wanna do is you don't wanna throw the, just throw a dry valve in. So a little magic. Is it Marvel or magic? I think it's Marvel Mystery Oil. I always call it magic. Marvel Mystery Oil. It's magic stuff. That's why I always get it kind of, uh, kind of confused. People call me out in the comments all the time. In one of my videos, I, I said it's magic mystery oil or whatever. And people are like, you mean it's Marvel? <laughs> you mean it's Marvel? But anyway, I'm just gonna put a little bit of this onto here. I'm gonna lube it up, lube up the valve. Again, this is my left exhaust valve. Get generous with it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the seal on this. So I'm just gonna slide, I'm gonna, underneath is the bottom side of the guide. So I'm just gonna kind of put my finger over that. And I'm gonna slide this valve in really slow. And what you want is you wanna feel pressure on that. It should almost like bounce back and you should feel suction. So, oh God, I wish I could show you this better. See, so, uh, look how it's, I pull it and it's pulling it back in. That's exactly what you want. So that's a really good sign for the, for the valve guide. So that's in there, just like that. You want it to spring back. If it's just kind of sliding down, um, you know, if it's just kind of sliding down or it's not holding air, because again, what I'm doing is, let me pull this out. I don't want to bust up any of this stuff. Well, all I'm doing is underneath here, there's the valve guide right here. I'm just holding my finger over it. That's, that's all I was doing and then you create that suction. So I'm gonna go around and make sure that all of these are working properly. So that one passed, that one was beautiful. Um, so then let's just go ahead and we'll take this off and let's do our intake. Just trying to keep all this stuff together. Again, don't forget to lubricate. It's actually a pretty good camera angle. The camera is like literally right in front of my chin. <laughs> Not optimal for me, but it's optimal for you. Again, I'm just gonna take a little marvel, lube this up. I'll take my hand underneath on the back side here. Plug that hole carefully. Go and look. Yeah, it's already resisting. See how I pull on that? And it's pulling it back. I can feel it on my finger. It's just like a little bit of suction. Right there, awesome, that's great. That's really good to see. I was a little worried, man, I keep running into on this bike, I keep running into just little things, man. I just keep running into little things that, I'm just getting, I'm getting a little, I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting a little nickeled and dimed right now um, on, on just random stuff. David, I've been taking a lot of photos for sure, but it's not the same, you know, as having a good manual. I'll talk about manuals here a little bit later. Um, if, if any of you know, like a really good 305 manual, please, please, please let me know. I think I've spent about 200 bucks so far on manuals and uh, I've been underwhelmed, been pretty underwhelmed. All right, let's do our exhaust right. Let's grab that. Keep the stack. Do you know where I just dropped that? It's fine. It landed on, on a piece of rubber, um, which is fine. But it's rubber down in the bottom of my freaking sump pump, man. Why? How, why? All right. Well, power of live streaming, guys. We're going to go down here and we're going to go get it. Hit right off of there, it should be fine. But God damn it, I gotta move all this stuff out of here. And then I gotta look down in here. Where the hell's my flashlight? 
Where's my flashlight? I hope I didn't put a big ding in that freaking valve. I'm gonna be so bummed out if I did. All right, going in. Here we go. Oh, see it. See it. Oh, my arms are too short. There it is. Oh boy. Oh, all right, we got the valve back. <laughs> all right, let me get this thing back on, that lid back on there. That's adventure. This is an entertainment channel, after all. All right, let's not do that again. Now I'm all dusty. All right, let me clean this part off a little bit, inspect it for any damages. I don't think it did. I saw it kind of just fall. Didn't look like it hit too bad. And either way, we're gonna clean up those surfaces tonight anyway, so we'll be good. That will have to go into the uh, blooper reel for sure. Yeah, Nick, you missed me dropping my valve, my engine valve down into the uh, sump pump. That's what you missed. Valve looks straight. I don't see any major damage. I think we might have got away with one. All right, this is right exhaust valve. That's what I was doing before I dropped it. Don't drop your valves. Not good. Don't do as I do. Let's keep going. Oh, come on, buddy. And I can already feel, can already feel that. You can even, oh, I wish you could hear that. Yep, that's perfect. All right, so we got suction on that one, or that one's bouncing back, so that's a good valve guide. Let's do it. Can we go four for four? Can we go four for four tonight? Uh, Tom, that was all me, man. That was all me. All me. I am multi-talented. I can, I, I can stick my arm down into a sump pump to save an engine valve like nobody's business. All right, let's lube this last one up. And let's see, grab underneath here, or wait, there it is down here, and insert, hopefully, yes. We got a good seal on that. David. Yep, look at that. Boing, boing, pulling back. Feels nice and smooth, going all the way in. And we've got really good reaction on that when I pull it. Yeah, we're gonna be good. I think we're gonna be okay on these. Not gonna lie, I was nervous. I was very, very nervous. Patrick, I got my 305 manual from him. Oh, I must have missed a message. Uh, Patrick, did I miss a message from you earlier? Uh, I don't see it. Yeah, Patrick, hook me up with a copy of that. <laughs> I'll trade you a really good 350 one. I'm gonna get these pistons out of the way so I don't end up dropping one of those now. I don't wanna drop one of the pistons, that's for sure. All right, I feel good about that. I'm glad that it passed that test. Now, I think we can just go ahead and lap these valves, or like clean the valves. I need to clean them as best as I can, and then we can lap these bad boys and get it going. Paul WV, that's a really good point, man. Um, uh, Patrick, it, it, do you have a digital one or do you have um, a hard copy? Let me know. Best way to, uh, if it's, if it's uh, electric or electronic, oh my God. Go to keeponwrenching.com and at the bottom you can message me from there. And uh, I'll, I'll look for it, and then I'll, I'll send you an email um, that uh, you could send that to. I would be forever 
in your debt because here let me show you this man before we get into this so let me actually grab one of these cameras which one's on this one's on okay so i'll take this one over here so like i'm i every manual that i've gotten so far has been a, an utter disappointment so this one tula is really familiar with this one Went ahead, got a copy of this. It definitely was not $4.99. It's saying it's $4.99 here, but it's definitely not. There's not a lot of information on 305 stuff in here. There's a, there's a little bit, but it doesn't, um, it, it doesn't really get into it, man. Oh, light on my phone is still on? Where's my phone? Oh, thanks, dude. <laughs> So there is some 305 stuff in this, but not nearly enough for me to do this job really, really well. You guys like my uh, monitor stand? It's an old box of kitty litter. I'm, I'm like high class over here. Um, it's like when it does mention a 305, it's like very, very limited. So it's like 80 something, you know, it's not giving me step-by-step, step-by-step instructions like I really need because this is the first time I've ever mucked around with one of these engines. There's just very little. Um, I, I actually took all, I went on a, my wife and I went for her birthday. We went on a little ski excursion. Um, I don't ski, but my wife skis. She loves it. And uh, so while she was kind of skiing, I was like reading these manuals <laughs> and kind of hanging out. Now this one I found on eBay and this was not cheap. I think I paid like 75 bucks for this book. And I thought this was going to be it because it was the uh, Chilton uh, Repair and Tune-Up Guide, which is the same. Like, if you're working on a 350, you need this book. You need it. Good luck finding it. I do have a digital copy that I can get out to people. Um, the 305, uh, 350, 360 Twins Repair Guide. It's the best one you can get for sure by far. So I thought this was going to be the version of that. And unfortunately, it's not. Um, it's, again, it's not giving me the amount of detail that I expect it to. Um, you know, uh, Patrick, I don't know which book that you've got. Um, let me know. Um, I'm very curious because I thought this one was going to like solve all of my problems. It looks good on the surface, but as I'm, as I'm like trying to do little tasks with it, I'm kind of like, Okay, you were a little vague there. Um, where the 350 Twins book, it wasn't vague at all. It told you exactly, you know, what was going on with that. It also skips around a lot between a few different models and things like that. So um, that's a little bit frustrating. So that one failed. So the next one that I got, the only one out of all of these that was totally worth anything was this bad boy. So this is the, uh, so it's 250-300. I, I don't know why it's 300, but it's the CB77 1960s models. Uh, this thing freaking rocks. Um, so it's a parts guide, but it's got all the exploded views for everything. So you know, you know, if you're missing a part, um, you can look up the part number. This thing is worth its weight in gold. Like, you know, we can see exactly how all these pieces go, but there's no like step-by-step. Step. You can just see exactly how something would go together and all the different variations and all that. Um, <clears throat> so, Patrick's written by Bill Silver's The Honda Guru. I need it, I need it. Um, if I need to buy the book from Bill Silver at some point, I will definitely do that, Patrick. Um, but if you can send me a copy to get me by here, because I'd love to get this motor going. This book has been very, very useful. I got this off eBay. This is a reprint, not original. And then I thought that this was going to be my ticket. I thought for sure, okay, when I got this one, that this was going to be exactly what I needed. It's got the CB77 right there. Chris, hey, welcome to the stream, man. Um, and it's got some of the stuff again, but again, it's missing so much. Like if I need certain measurements or anything like that, I think it, this is gonna be good for that because it's got all the, all the spec sheets and all that, fantastic. But again, look at the <laughs> um, detail. Let, let's just take a look at some of the detailed instructions. Um, like two words. 
two words, th or well, it's four words, but um, it's it's just like basically it, it'll tell you what size wrench you need, which is kind of cool. Um, that's actually pretty useful. But other than that, it doesn't really tell me anything. It's there's no editorial in it at all. It's not saying, hey, you should maybe try this. There are some really good explanations of things and like how things work, which I think is, is really, really great. Um, and it did help me with the carburetors a little bit. Um, so stuff like that it works well with, but not for disassembly. Again, it's got really good guides in it for all the different parts and all of that. But man, the, the uh, 350, 360 book, it literally it told you exactly what to do step by step, step by step, step by step all along the way. This one is kind of fun. This was an, an Amazon purchase this last week. I saw this as came up in like my recommended. Honda Enthusiast Guide to Motorcycles, 1959 to 1985. So it was like 25 bucks. But look at all these bikes that are featured in this thing. These are all different bikes. And this isn't a parts manual or anything like that. Is that your copy? I thought your copy's on the shelf over here, dude. I've, I've, I bought one of my own, Tula. Um, yours, is, uh, yours is on the shelf, I think. Um, but yeah, look. So like for each bike, it kind of goes through just like its little story and its evolution. And it's got a lot of its specifications like this. Uh, full color photos, which I really like. I think it's going to be a really nice reference guide. Here, let me see. Tula, what are you saying nope for? You could have either one, but I got two of them. I got two of the Honda books, man. It wouldn't be odd that yours is in better shape than mine, for sure. <laughs> so, but I got two of them here, dude. There are errors in, well, yeah, there's errors in, in this one, Tula. I don't know. So, yeah, take your pick. You can have either one of those that you want back. <laughs> but this book I really like. Um, where was it in the CB77? Superhawk 77. So what I love, 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 love about this, man, is that the photos are in color. And you can totally see like kind of what was painted, what wasn't painted, what was polished, what the color scheme was on this, um, what was painted, what was not painted. So um, really good. And then like just some of the detailed photos, um, you can really, uh, it's, it's priceless when, when you're starting to do that. Like even just some of these, uh, the, the, the gauges and all that stuff. So Jack goes in on the stream. And it goes into all the specs and like, look, a nice little zoomed in photo of that motor. So this really can help me kind of figure out like what I need to do. Um, rocking and rolling. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So what, in this, on this uh, Super Hawk, uh, 398 pounds, 305 CC four speed, 26 millimeter carbs, a 3.6 gallon gas tank. 3.6 gallon gas tank. That's a big one. I think my, I think my 70 CB350 gas tank only holds two and a half, I think. And then the CL holds about two. They were in production from 61 to 68. Um, this is awesome. So this is a good resource if you're looking to buy other bikes too, because it's like available examples, three out of seven. So not super rare or, or kind of rare. Ease of restoration of four out of seven. So not the easiest, not the hardest. Replacement part availability, five out of seven. Final value versus restoration cost, five out of seven. <laughs> it also referenced in here someplace, uh, if I remember right, that it was like, yeah, the parts are available, but they're expensive. And it's very, very true. I'm very quickly um, blowing up my budget a little bit on this bike, but I don't care because it's a special circumstance bike that I'm trying to get this thing done. So. Um, yeah, this is a really, really, really cool bike, and it covers a ton of Honda motorcycles. And again, all full color. I think it was 20, 25 bucks or 27 bucks. Oh, I wonder if the, oh, the Dream should be in here. I, I didn't even, 
I keep forgetting that 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 CB or what CA seventy seven, uh, page eight. There's the dream. Oh, that's the touring. The other one must be in here, but I got one of these sitting out in the garage right now, <laughs> and it's just sitting there, just waiting um, to go. It's a little bit lighter, huh? I would have thought it would have been a little bit heavier. Um, parts availability lower. Final value versus restoration cost is lower. It's just as you get older, the parts get harder and harder and harder to find, and that's what I'm finding. Uh, you know, while I got the camera set up like this, so um, Patrick, I'm really excited to see uh, this manual that that you can offer up because these aren't these aren't really cutting it for me um, in that regard. Tula, you can take your pick, whatever book you want on those. I got too many. I ended up just buying. Sometimes late at night when I'm just kind of sitting around, I tend to just buy things. I'm like, oh, I need one of those. I want one of those. Why can't I have one of these? I'm going to buy this. Got to show you. So here's my last uh, uh-oh moment was the oil sling on the 350. Yeah, parts are getting, parts are expensive. So oil sling came out, but man, this, it's actually bent. I can get it back together now because I finally got it apart. But what I noticed when I took it off, and I noticed this before I did it, there was a, where did I freaking imagine it? No, oh, you can see like a little drop mark on the side of it. Oh God, too many lights, too many lights. There is a crack right there. You can see it. There's a little crack right there. Thanks, Patrick. I really, really appreciate that. VintageHonda.com. I will check that out. So this oil sling um, has this crack in it. It is above the, like there's a gasket in here and, and all of that, but it's also oblong and it was really hard to get this cover. This cover should like just kind of like pull off, but it, uh, you can kind of see it like gets hung up. And even when I spin it a little bit, that crack expands just a, just a schmidgen. Where is it? There it is. Oh, it's really tight. So I just went ahead and ordered a new one. Uh, luckily, uh, I found one for like, uh, it was like 22 bucks or something. $42 for this change, <laughs> for this chain. <sighs> okay, I'm going to put this down gently, gently. The other thing that I, I need to focus on too, and we'll get back to the valves, don't worry. Don't worry, I have not forgotten. Um, just getting some thoughts on this. I, the cam chain tensioner looks good to me. Um, and I'm having a really hard time sourcing another cam chain tensioner. I know we should be replacing them. The only thing I'm finding are these sport, are, the, are those sport ones, which we talked about. But I dug it out. And it looks pretty good to me. There's a couple little nicks, but what I was thinking what I was thinking was um, maybe treating this with the uh, brake fluid or even that, uh, what was it, the peppermint or whatever, and, and, uh, and, and seeing if I could soften this rubber up a little bit. Now that I'm looking at it under the camera and under my new lights, it is ground up a little bit there. But man, if any of you have rebuilt a 305, please, please, please let me know, like where the hell do you find one of these? I can find new old stock ones but a new old stock one isn't, isn't going to be ideal. Wintergreen, that's what it was, Jacko. Um, but yeah, I was thinking about just kind of getting that pull, that, that, that pulley and treating that, um, kind of make it supple again. This uh, cam chain tensioner is like really the last piece I need to like deep clean. It's the only thing that's super greasy, which, you know, honestly is pretty amazing that this was uh, like, this is the bulk of what that motor looked like and what I've been kind of cleaning up, it's just caked, you know, just caked. But underneath all of that grease and all of that dirt, it's really, really clean. Cause like, again, these side, like all of this came out beautiful, beautiful, you know, it's ready to go. Gasket surfaces are all good. This is looking beautiful. Like, look at that cover, man, just degreased. That gives me like huge hope, you know? This is kind of like the benchmark piece right now. It's like, wow, if I could get the whole thing looking like that, I'm gonna be pretty pleased, pretty pleased with that. So, wintergreen oil with alcohol, that's right. There's a video out there. 
who made it. Doc, did you, Doc, was that you, Doc? I think you made the video about the winter green. Yeah, too, I bought a copy. I just, I had to have my own. And it's been a great disappointment. Just kidding, it's fine. Just not quite as much uh, 350 stuff as I, as I need. 19 people here, man. If you're, if, you're, if you're new to the stream, welcome, first of all. And uh, next, go to KeepOnWrenching.com. Go get that free sticker, your Keep On Wrenching sticker. It's not like a chintzy sticker either, man. It's a legit sticker. Get yourself a Keep On Wrenching sticker. I'll send you one right in the mail. Put that on someplace kind of cool. Kind of cool. Yeah, Doc, you made one. I remember. I remember. All right, let's lap some valves. So we've tested our valve guides. Our valve guides are good to go. Fine with that. Um, so what we need to do is we need to start lapping valves. So I'm going to start. We're going to do this. I'm going to grab my other camera just in case I want to flip back and forth. It's been a while since I've done this. It's probably been a couple years since I lapped any valves. Three to one alcohol, winter green. Winter green oil with alcohol. Do you, hey Doc, do you think that would help? Help kind of supplize that uh, cam chain tensioner, that roller? All right, how the hell did I do this again? Okay, first of all, I needed a little tube or a little piece of gas line, so I need to cut a piece of this. Three parts alcohol, one part winter green. Nuded. Grab my shears, excuse my reach. And uh, so they do make special tools um, that you can use um, to do this job that actually suction to the top of the valve. But actually in the Honda manual, they suggest just taking a piece of um, fuel line and using fuel line to do it. So um, it says that in the 350 manual uh, that I have, um, and it worked fantastic for the, or not the Apocalypse bike, the uh, CL350. It worked great. So, okay. Focus. Got to focus for a little bit. The other thing you'll need is a little bit of fine grade uh, metal compound. It's a grinding compound. It's a fine grade. Can that focus for me one day? Okay, thank you. Fine grade, just like that. Tube will probably last you a lifetime once you buy one. And we will need, again, our Marvel Mystery Oil. I think I'm going to go ahead and put on a pair of gloves. I slashed my finger today, um, stupidly, um, like the dumbest thing in the world. I uh, was trying to reach for a straw in our, in our, like our silverware and knife drawer, and I was like, ooh, there's the straw, and I was grabbing the straw, and I didn't even notice that there was like a giant knife blade um, right next to the straw. So as I was like picking up the straw, I like ran my finger right against that stupid knife. <sighs> Not, not, not cool, not cool. Well, yeah, we already fixed the fan. I'm feeling so good. I'm feeling good. 17 people. And uh, hopefully I get, my, my phone will start buzzing with some people getting some stickers. That'd be really cool. Okay, enough procrastinating. Whoa, what's going on? Patrick Shenanigans just donated $70 through Super Chat. Patrick, that's insane, man. That's insane, dude. Um, I can't thank you enough for that donation. I hope it wasn't an error and you meant to put $7 in and you ended up putting 70 in, um, but that's, that's huge. Um, that's going right back into the program. Get us our parts, get us better lights, get us better cameras, all of that. Uh, Patrick, <laughs> incredible. Uh, thank you so much. That, that blows me away. That's incredible. So everybody will show a little love uh, to Patrick there for supporting uh, Keep On Wrenching that way. That's, that's huge. Awesome. Okay, gotta focus, gotta think. Brian needs to think. Patrick's having trouble finding his laptop. So there's a little something to cover the cost from Bill's site. Oh my goodness. Oh man, I'll, I, I will go and buy that. I will, I will go and buy that. That will be what I do after the stream tonight, man. Uh, that was totally unnecessary, Patrick, but um, extremely appreciated. I will get myself a proper book. And you know what's cool is I'll be able to support Bill um, with that. So here's our first valve. I'm gonna do my best not to drop it. Um, let's actually clean this just a little bit first. I, I haven't really cleaned these at all. 
So what I like, I, oh, oh, that fell down. Nothing to see there, everybody. Um, I like using a brake clean and a little brass brush just to clean the valves just a little bit. I just get the, the bulk of it off. Again, a brass brush, nice and soft. There we go. And see if I can not fumble things around. Just not going down the shaft on this, on, the, on that uh, valve again. Only this top cup. I'm not really super picky about how clean I get it. Awesome, dude. I'm gonna look up Bill for sure. I was unaware of that. I heard that there was like a 305 guru. I think somebody may have mentioned it before, that there was like a 305 guru out there. Probably gonna need his help, not gonna lie. So just kind of cleaning this up just a little bit. Not going nuts. I mean, it's all going to get freaking dirty again anyway. And just clean, clean, clean. That's all we're doing. Oh, that's incredible, man. Incredible. And I'll just kind of clean this top edge a little bit. Ah, sucks. I had a little mark on there. Well, that's obviously gone now because I did have my valves all lined up right. Oh, well, whatever, ain't the end of the world. Yeah, right, Michael? That's pretty cool. Very generous, man, very generous. So, all right, let's get to work. Let's, let's lap some valves. So we've got our fine grade. I'm kind of doing this by memory, to be quite honest. Um, you don't need much. Where's my tube? Okay, there's my tube, there's my valve. There's that, you don't need much. So you're going to go to the bottom side of the valve and you're going to put three little, little, little dots, like three little dots all the way around it. And like, it doesn't have to be much. This stuff goes a long ways. That's probably a little too much there. That's probably a little too much, but whatever. God, why is that this camera? It just doesn't like me tonight. There, see those three dots just evenly spaced around, move that stuff out of the way. I'm gonna, again, before you ever put one of these valves back in, make sure that you are lubricating it. Okay. Just like that. Again, I'm trying to remember exactly how the hell I did this before. All right, so we'll grab this. That is lubed up. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna drop this valve in there drop it in and I'm gonna need to like hold it up I don't want it to like seat down in here at all really and now I got to flip this darn thing over just a little bit oh, that actually worked out perfectly um, and then I'm gonna grab this hose okay and I'm gonna slip the hose onto the end of the valve the valve is not seated yet okay I'm gonna push the hose on Not too far. There we go. And now what I can do is I can hold my valve kind of taut here. And what you're going to do is you're going to do like one third motions. One third, one third. And I've just got light pressure. And I did that like, what, five, ten times maybe. And I'm going to lift up. And I'm going to turn the valve another third. And then I'm going to lift up again, right here, just lift up on pressure, turn it another third, push it down, and I'm turning it about a third kind of each time. You can already kind of feel it getting smoother. I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to check. I'm going to do it one more time. So I'm going to turn it a third, and then I'm just going to do a third twist. Okay. Push it out, do another third. And 
one more third. You can feel it like getting, getting worn onto that surface a little bit. So now what I wanna do is remove my hose and pull this out. Let's give it a little wipey wipe. And you can see the edges of this. It's gonna be damn near impossible to show you. But you can see there, you can see it. See how that edge is getting nice and shiny? What you wanna do is take a look all the way around. So I've got one edge. Oh, I got one edge that looks really good. See how it's nice and shiny right there? On this side, it's not, it's still dark. Still dark, it's not shiny, it's dark. Over here it's nice and shiny. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do it again. Um, just drop this again. Do it just a little bit more. I'll do just a smidgen more compound. Like literally just touching this thing to the end. And again, before I insert, I'll do a little bit more lubrication. And what the hell am I doing again? Oh yeah. This one is my exhaust. I'm gonna push that in and find that hose. Stick the hose on there. Uh, and let's just do this again one more time. Oh, turn it. There's the, like you can feel it, it's like the trouble spot. Oops, sorry about that. Just gentle pressure. Push it out, turn it again. Ooh, yeah, it starts to feel like glass once you get it. It, it can be. There's a, um, I don't know where you're at, Pat. Um, in Michigan, there's a process for it. It can be done. You just gotta play the game, man. I've heard the, the, there's a good video that came out about the Vermont title. I forget who made it. Was it Brickhouse Builds? These are feeling pretty good now. All right, let's check it. Let's not get too aggressive. Like just, it's better to check more often, you know? Pull that valve out. So paranoid about dropping it again. Should actually put a little towel down. Yeah, this looks way better. Oh, still got a little bit of work on this one edge, but it's a lot smaller. So there we can see nice and silver, nice and silver. And then there's one little tarnish spot in it right there. I think I'm gonna do it one more time just to get this one. Oh God, that's hard to show you on this. Nice and shiny, nice and shiny. And it goes kind of dull right in that spot right there. Yeah, I'm gonna do it one more time, I think. I think there's enough rubbing compound or compound on there. Who almost made that cardinal sin of putting that in without the oil. <clears throat> we know the valve guides are good, so we don't wanna mess them up now, you know? You wanna be really careful not to get any of that rubbing compound down in there. It should. I mean, you'd have to do something pretty crazy to, to get that stuff down in there. But all right, let's try it again. It's not impossible, Pat. It's not impossible. In, so in Michigan, it's really weird. Like, I got to change hands. That's annoying. Um, in Michigan, it's really odd. Like, I can't get a title until the bike is done and it passes a police inspection. 
Think about what I just said, guys. Think about how dumb that is. I actually had a conversation with the Secretary of State the other uh, well, week ago. My, last Monday, I was over there. And I was like, hey, you know, this is really dumb. I have to invest, you know, two, three grand into these bikes, just kind of hoping, you know, that the title clears. So you basically got to finish the bike before you can get it titled. Because you have to do, it's like a, I've got the form over there. They have to come and like inspect it and make sure. And I was telling her, I was like, dude, I'm not trying to register it. I'm just trying to um, get a title for it. She's like, wow, well, why are you doing that for? You know, and I'm like, because I have a YouTube channel and I restore vintage motorcycles. <laughs> she didn't seem impressed. There we go. That looks perfect. Oh, sorry. That looks perfect to me. That looks really, really, really good along all the edges on that one. So let's set that down. And let me see if I got a microfiber. I'll find a microfiber cloth. <clears throat> and let's take a look at the, at the seat surface here. That should be a really nice, strong silver circle down here. Get in there. You can see it. Yeah, you can totally see it on the camera. That's awesome. There's a little bit. God, it's hard to see. You know, I might do it one more time just to get the valve seat just a little bit better. I think I can get that seat even better. Cause there are just a couple little pits in it right now. Oh, what was that? Okay. We're okay. No crisis. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do this one again. I should almost get a stool because I think I'm going to be sitting here a little while tonight working on this and talking about this Vermont title. <laughs> it's a thing, man. But yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, you don't get a title, but then most states somehow, some way, um, you can use that registration to get a title is how I understand it. I'm gonna keep going on this. I don't like the way my va that valve seat is looking. So I'm gonna do this a little bit more. How did I do that? It worked out so well before. All right, oh, lubrication. Just like that. And let's get up here a little bit. Let's insert. <clears throat> All right, grab my tube. Connect my tube. Oh, come on. There it is. All right, push that on. I might get a little bit aggressive because the, uh, valve seat looked pretty bad yet. It should be like a really nice shiny silver. The gas line works perfectly for this. I think I'm going to just buy bikes with titles now. <laughs> if possible. Although I did just see one in a town not too far away. They want 950 bucks for it. It's a CB160, 65 or, six, or 64, 65. I did message the guy. I asked him if he had the title. ASMR grinding noises. You 
Yeah, there's like one weird spot in it. Like right in here. That is giving the, the old muscle in the hand <laughs> a workout, I tell you. I'm gonna turn it a third again. I'm actually amazed that you guys can hear that grinding noise on the little lav mic that I'm wearing. I guess I am like kneeled down like right right by it. I'm gonna check it again here real quick. There, it feels pretty smooth all the way around now. Let's check it. Pop it off. Pull that out. I don't think this gets much better. <laughs> See how we did over here. It's better. I actually feel okay about that. It doesn't look too bad. There's still a, a couple little small, this is gonna be impossible to show you because it's so far away and so small. But I think that looks pretty good. It's pretty good, good enough. It is definitely clean, it is definitely smooth. And the valve looks really good. How is it worn? It's still a little dark right there. I could keep going. That's oh, a little dark right there yet. How perfect has this got to be? Huh? How perfect has this got to be? Probably pretty perfect. It's always the exhaust ones that are always going to be a lot worse. Yeah, because like, look, here's the uh, undone one right here. Oops, it's falling down the hole. Like, you don't see any silver there. And there you can actually see the ring, just like that. Boop, 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 boop. I think it'd be good. I'm with you, Jacko. I think it'd be good. Good enough. Good enough. Mary Poppins, was she perfect? What's the deal with perfect? It's been so long since I've seen that. I'm gonna call this good. So, what the hell did I do with all the parts? Okay, here they are. All right, let's put this back together. Put that in there. And let's go ahead and do, let's finish this side. This side's gonna be easy, because look how clean that intake is. Oh wow, and this intake valve, oh my God. Yeah, this will be easy. I'm gonna lap it anyway, but look at that. I need like a, a different lens that I can do like close up with. That actually looks pretty freaking good right out of the gate. There's just a dirty exhaust valve. All right, we're gonna do it anyway because it's been forever. And we're in here, so we might as well do it, right? All right, a little bit of rub, a little bit of compound, just a little bit. That's probably a little bit more accurate there. Oh, come on. It like captures it for like just a millisecond and then it disappears. Like that. And this is my left intake. I'm gonna slide that down and in. And see if I can tip this up, find my hose, clip my hose on the back side of that. And let's do the one third game. So this one I do have a little, my mark is still good cause I didn't, cause this valve is so clean anyway. Down right where it was. All 
Now I'll turn it another third. I gotta perfect my method of this. Nick, I don't know, man. I mean, they run okay. <laughs> I don't think my bikes are totally dialed in, like carb-wise, you know? Like, I don't think I've, I've really gotten the carburetor thing down yet. This feels... I'm just gonna end on my mark. I think this one's going to be done, honestly. This looks pretty freaking good right out of the gate. <sighs> yeah, I mean... Look at that. Yeah, it's clean. Yeah, carburetors, I think, are definitely an art. Got to be careful. I got to remember, I got to be really careful not to, like, touch the shaft if I have any compound or anything on my, on my hands. And that's what you want to see when you wipe it. See that nice shiny silver inside? That's what you want, man. That is perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. I feel really, that, that, no doubt about it. My exhaust valve, eh, it could be a little bit better, but it's pretty damn good. Uh, I mean, if it was terrible, I would definitely do it again, but it's pretty good. This actually looks really good. Feel good about that. All right, let's flip around, or actually I'm gonna keep it oriented the way it is. And let's put this back in. Again, this little template here just is making sure the right valve goes right back into the right place. Yeah, carbs are an art, man. Uh, there's something to it. It's also, it's just a feel and it's a sound, you know, of getting that right. You know, like I remember, I remember when my dad was out here uh, last summer, you know, and start a bike up, and he just like kind of be like, I don't know, sounds like running a little lean, <laughs> you know, like you just like just out of hearing it. Um, okay, so these two are done. Let's do this exhaust. So the exhausts are going to be a little bit harder, of course, because it's where all the gunk is flying out. So this one I'm going to have to clean. So we'll just quick clean this one, just like we did brass brush, little brake clean. I don't know if brake clean is the best thing to use. I have no idea, but this stuff seems to freaking cut through stuff. And it smells really good. And it smells good. But my bikes do typically start <clears throat> once I figure out the little gremlins and stuff. I've, had to, I've rebuilt carbs so many times. I'm sure like all of you have too. Um, it's just like, I must have rebuilt the carbs on the uh, 72 uh, CL350 after it sat for the first winter. I bet I, re I bet I rebuilt those six times easy before I finally got whatever was going on sorted. And I'm still not even sure what the hell was wrong with that thing. Some got plugged up, but I just kept rebuilding them, rebuilding them. And finally it worked itself out. Let's just a little bit more clean this. Kind of, this is kind of a good project for the stream, I feel like. It's a good conversational project. Like I have to focus, but I don't have to focus super hard. So, glad you're here, man. 19 viewers, we're crushing it. Crushing it tonight. If you're on the stream for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to Keep On Wrenching and go get yourself a free sticker. Head over to keeponwrenching.com and uh, I will get you a really cool keep on wrenching sticker in the mail as soon as i get my envelopes i will be sending out another shipment so you could probably get yours pretty quick so let's just do i didn't do really like a before and after on this one but look at how do 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 see how black how can i do this come on focus see how black this is around the edges it's really it's black there's there if i get the reflection out of it you can really see how dark that is and also the port itself right here, or right here, over here, because we're doing this one, duh. Um, this is all black. You don't see any silver happening on, on this exhaust valve. 
at all. So we're gonna try tackle this. So it's gonna be the lower one. Flip it around. This time you get to watch it from the uh, from the hose side. How exciting, right? How exciting for you um, to be able to watch lapping valves from all directions. Put a little dab of fine grinding compound. I got a little excessive on this one. Knock some of that down. Grab your Marvel Mystery Oil. Lube up that shaft. And grab this. I think the biggest thing is just be really careful. Oh wait, go into this one. Almost, wait, what am I doing? Yeah, exhaust, right? Yeah, cool. All right, going down there like this. Drop this in. And I should actually flip it around this way. So you can possibly see what's going on here. So here's the valve shaft right here. And again, all I'm doing is I take this little piece of gas line and stick that on there. I'm gonna line up my line. It's a little, it's, it's weird filming and working, man. So I'm gonna line it up. If I can find my line, where's my line? Oh, cause I cleaned it, duh. Oh well, doesn't matter. All right. So I'm push light pressure back on this side and then start to grind this. One third, turn it a third. You're just kind of waiting for this kind of glassy feeling on the tool or on the on that on that surface. You can feel it in your thumb as you're pushing it down. Like whether or not. Ooh, that's what kills your thumb, man. Ooh. Just like that. There, it's starting to slide. It, it like changes the sound. Did you guys hear that? Like once you kind of get to a certain point. Gosh, that is brutal. Come back over here. Go like this. It like almost sounds like you're ice skating a little bit once you get to the right spot. Like there's a dirty side right there. Oops. I'm just kind of waiting for that grindy sound to kind of go away. And again, this is the exhaust valve. It's gonna be freaking way dirtier. But we should be done with this after an hour and 27 minutes on stream already. Holy buckets. Right there it feels like glass. All right, let's check it. So I'm just going to pull this off, pull the hose straight off, and push the valve up. See what we got. So you remember how black it was before. Still, I think I should do it one more time. Definitely better. Definitely better. See how you can see the silver? That's good. 69 Chafel, welcome to the stream. Good to see you, man. That looks pretty good. Let's take a look at our valve surface. Let's see, was it this one? Oh my God, I'm getting turned around, guys. Oh yeah, because it's on this side. I'm actually gonna put a little dot here because I'm spinning things around and I'm not really focusing, so I need to remember where I'm at. So that's wipey wipe. That actually, so like now you can see the silver in this. See it? Boom. That looks pretty good to me. Things are going well, 69 Chevelle. Hope you're doing well. Happy Thursday night. That's a good question, Dave, one, two, three. I've never had a new motor or new valves. <laughs> I'm gonna do this, just cause it's on the exhaust side, I'm gonna do this one one more time. Cause it is pretty dirty. There's a couple little pits in it that I'd like to get out. Because you do, like, just because, I don't know why I keep saying it. It's like, oh, it's the exhaust valve. It still matters because it still, it has to seal. 
You know, it needs to seal really well because otherwise it ain't going to work right. So let's go ahead and push this in. Slide that in. Grab the hose. It's easier for me to do it this way, actually. All right. And I'm just going to do this one a little aggressively. Dave, I really haven't done a whole ton of engine work either. In fact, I was talking to a buddy of mine the other night, and he's just like, you don't really like working on engines very much, do you? I was like, no, it's not my favorite thing. I'd much rather restore parts and make things look pretty. Not my, not, not my favorite thing to do. But I'm learning, and I'm getting better. This, I, I think that's all I needed, was just a little bit more. Again, just do it in like one thirds. Turn it a third, bring it back a third. Lapping valves. <clears throat> Some people call it grinding valves. I think that sounds too aggressive, so I don't, I don't wanna call it that. You're just trying to get these two surfaces to mate perfectly. And get it really nice. Nice and tight. All right, I think that's probably good on the exhaust side. 69 Chevelle, I recently got a 94 Honda Rebel. That was like the motorcycle I wanted when I was in high school, when I was just a kid, learned, oh, the Rebel. It goes about 75 miles per hour right now, but I wanted to get it at least 85 for the highway. Is that as fast as they would go naturally? Oh, I guess it's a 250. Yeah, I mean, the one thing, couldn't you, wouldn't um, changing sprocket size get you a little more out of that? Would make it, you could make it, you could get a little bit more out of each, each one, right? I guess I would, the easiest thing I guess I would look at would be like front and front rear sprocket. So go with a smaller front and a bigger rear. Is that how that would go? Ooh, there, that's pretty, I like that, I like that. I like that a lot. That looks really good, I like it. I like it a lot. And then we'll go ahead, we'll wipe this off. There, this looks, that, it needed that second pass. Because now it actually shines just a little bit, and it's looking really good. I'm having fun tonight. Are you guys having fun tonight? Happy Thursday night. Tomorrow's Friday. The weekend's coming. If you work on the weekends, you're still probably one day closer to having a day off. You know, but that's great. That's great. Very pleased. Very pleased. All right, one to go. One to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back. I'm trying to be careful not to touch the shaft of the valve. If I have any compound anywhere, I'm just putting that right back into my template, just like this. And give my fingers just a little rest here, man. It's a lot of work. Um, <clears throat> I would think sprockets would be where I would look first. I don't know if I'd be looking at, you know, how I would get the engine to do more. I'd be trying to get my gears, like the, that, that gear ratio to get you a little more. Which if you do that, well, no, that shouldn't mess with your speedometer because the front wheel is still turning the same. And that should be gauging everything. All right, let's do the last one. So this is intake right side. This is actually kind of big. I mean, I'm just like kind of positioning myself, you know, to get to engine assembly. I'm doing all the little kind of dirty work, you know, that needs to be done in order to get this there. This valve already looks... Oops, this valve already looks really good. Just needs to be scuffed up a little bit. See, we'll scuff it up a little bit. Oh, Dave, I'm jealous, man. I'm, je I'm jealous. We got ice storm in Michigan. We got six inches of snow. Probably going to be eight inches of snow by tonight. I don't know. We'll see how much is out there, but it's, it's a snowy mess right now. And we got like this sleety rain right before the snow, so that's never fun. All right, let's go ahead and do our intake. Drop that in. Let's tip 
I guess I guess you're gonna get the tube side of the action this time. Just like that. And like that. And grab this. I'm not quite ready to install the valves yet. The valves are a little weird on these. So I need to do a little bit of research on it. I think I'm gonna get that, that Silver's book first. Yeah, this is already really clean. You can just feel it, like as you're doing it, you can just feel it. And if you're wondering, I'm trying to keep the original engine as it's completely restored. So yeah, wouldn't you think? I would think, I would think sprockets would be where I would start to try to get more out of it. Unless I'm, I, I could be just making that up too. Um, this uh, was the Silver's book. I, I, you know what? We need to bring that. Up. I need to get the browser working on this, uh, on the setup tonight. I don't understand why it's not working. Something's going on with that. As soon as we, well, let, let's muck with that a little bit. Again, one third. Turn it one third. Give it about five, six, seven, eight kind of turns. Turn it a third. Hit it again. It's gonna feel really good. I don't have to do this one very much at all. This feels really good. You don't need one of those fancy suction tools. A little gas line will work just fine. Pulls right off. It's like the perfect diameter to be able to do that. And carefully push this out. Grab it. Let's give it a wipe. There we go. Nice. Nice clean surface. Wow, that looks great. Okay, good there. And then let's see how we did on this. So this should be good. Yeah, oh boy, that looks good. It's so satisfying, man, to like get that cleaned up like that. So that is good. Look at that. I think that looks pretty good to me. That exhaust one could maybe be done a little bit more. I'll take your recommendations on it. It's tough to focus in on. It's pretty clean though. It looks pretty good comparatively to this and that. I think it's good. I honestly think this is gonna be just fine. I think we just lapped the valves on that. But again, that perfect little surface. That's what we're going for, baby. That is this beauty. I just love stuff like that. Loving it. All right. So those valves are lapped. And I'm gonna go and get this the hell out of here, put this into a safe spot so it doesn't, so I don't lose anything. Just like that. And yeah, really, I think it's just a matter of making sure that I got all of the rubbing compound out of here. rotating my rag a lot it shouldn't be going in anywhere but that is that is a that's a good kind of a night and day difference let me see if I can get you a, a straight on kind of shot of these uh, looks pretty good Oh, there we go. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Look at that gasket surface. Look how clean that is. That stuff is a pain in the butt. Pain in the butt, man. Pain in the butt. But I think I'm good on that. It need, this, this head just needs to go through. Yeah, right, Jacko? Big difference. It's got to help. It's got to help, I would think. Like, look how nice and clean this is. It's coming there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tackle this one more time, I think, with degrease and get into some of these nooks and crannies. I think I need to get the Dremel out with a kind of a nylon brush attachment. Just get into some of this stuff. Get the super clean work in. Rocking and rolling. So I think I'm good on that. I feel like the valves are now lapped. 
I'm in good shape on this. Look how nice and clean that came out. Um, really pleased with how that, that worked out. Uh, we fixed the fin on this thing tonight too, which is awesome. So let me see. So that would go this way. I just kind of want to just for, just for giggles. Let's see. Where's the cam chain tensioner side? This way. Goes this way. And then we can take this thing. And I'll sit on there just like that. And then we'll take this thing. And I believe it goes on there like that. And we're starting to build that tower to Babel. But I mean, this don't look bad to me. This doesn't look bad to me. Like, look at that. I mean, you throw that on a bike and you run it. I got to clean these fins just a little bit more, the, like the in, deep inside the fins. And I got to do this middle section. But overall, that's not bad. Doc Jones looks awesome. Brian got a call at an early one tonight. Catch you later. Later, everybody. Thanks so much for stopping by, Doc. Keep those videos coming. Keep those videos coming, dude. I think you did the vapor blasting one. I gotta, I gotta look at those. Cause I would love to have myself a vapor blaster. This looks great. So it's coming. I just got more, more garbagey cleaning, degreasing, polishing to do on that. So yeah. Okay, I'm going to take it down because it's sitting on the cylinder right now. <laughs> My luck, it'll probably just fall over, tumble and fall into a million pieces. Yeah, these all um, cleaned up, these, ho these honed out really, really well. I've got them sprayed down with WD-40 um, on the inside just so they don't rust. But there you can see the striations in it. Came out really, really nice. Those look really good, actually. Even better than I remember. Being really careful with all these parts, I just don't want to drop something or, you know, get a setback or anything like that. So we're good there. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see. Let's take a look at this beautiful bike that that motor is going to actually go in. There it is. There it is, the 1967 Superhawk that has, I think, like a 64 front end on it. <laughs> If I had to guess. And the fun thing about it, again, is that, you know, this, this old girl, she's, oh, what'd I do? Oh, turn the light on. There we go. Ha, ha, ha. There it is. Light on, light off. It's got like this headlight switch on it right here. And the high beam should, or turn it on again. Oop. And then switch it. High beam, low beam, high beam, low beam. Doesn't make a hell of a lot of difference. <sighs> but it's coming along uh, really, really, really good. Um, one thing that I do want to do, let's get you over here, is, and look how nice this gauge came out. It's looking pretty special. It's looking pretty special. I'm liking it. Um, I want to take a look at the wiring here underneath here real quick. So I'm just going to pull this tank off. I'm going to go put this tank in a really safe spot because I don't want to drop it, put a scratch in it. Before we do that, let's take a good look how nice this came out. Look at that. Woo! This is amazing. PB5 electric blue Chrysler paint is almost a perfect match on this. So um, I'm going to go put this in a really safe spot so I don't break it. And oh, God, I'm wondering where the hell can I, where can I, where can I put it? Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, God. Uh, 
Um, oh, man. Psych. <laughs> Tank's fine. Tank's fine. Just messing with y'all. Just messing with y'all. Tank's fine. Oh, I probably just jinxed myself though. There we go. There we go. That's a pretty bike. That is a really, 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 really pretty motorcycle. Pat, the Flying Dragon CL350, $58,000 on auction. Can you believe that? <laughs> 58000 I saw that too. Somebody posted it, man. Patrick, not cool. <laughs> Come on, I get to have a little bit of fun. That's a cool bike. That's a cool bike. Yeah, that wasn't very nice, was it? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, mission accomplished, Patrick. Mission accomplished. <laughs> oh man, that was that that was fun. Um, that that was completely premeditated, by the way. Um, I ended up. What did I do? Oh yeah, I just dropped this uh, CL125 tank. <laughs> this one's all rotted out. It's like such a pile of crap. I just threw it on the ground. So no harm, no foul. Tank is just fine. Dave, one, two, three, remember when you dropped the tank when you were painting it? Kicked it with your toe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me see if I can fix my browser here real quick. Uh, I need to see why it's not picking up my browser right now. So I'm just going to restart here. Not the stream. I'm not going to restart the stream. But I just need to restart my browser. Give me a second. That was pretty good. I, I hope a couple of your hearts like dropped, because that was kind of like the whole the whole goal there. Open the Gmail app. Yeah, okay, I'm opening it. Oh my god. Got two, I got my gloves on. It's not working right. That was mean. I probably shouldn't have shouldn't have done that. Let's see. Two-step verification. I don't want to do it that way. Try another way. Get a verification code. Why don't we try that, Google? This two-step verification stuff drives me freaking crazy. All right. Do, 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 do. Not the most thrilling, man, but I want, to, I want to dive in. I want to look at the book, and then I want to look at some parts for the CB77. So we should be good now that we get in here. My channel, and then I'm gonna, okay, so you should be, still be able to hear me, but it's gonna go black here for a second. I'm gonna try, see if this damn thing will let me. I'm gonna kill one of these. See if I can get this one to fire. That one's not firing either. Man, it is not picking up my Chrome browser for some reason. Let me try, I'm gonna try one more thing here real quick. Bear with me, I'm so sorry. It's super annoying, I know. Add a source, add it. Uh, yes, I think I got it. All right, so I just need to bring this out a little bit. And then I need to flip it. A little bit so then give me drag this down and then we can see all the cool fun logos bam all right cool I'm glad I actually fixed that that was really annoying the hell out of me so now we can actually look at the night it was the hushed f-bomb that sold it <laughs> yeah cuz I, 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 I don't swear very much believe it or not I don't swear at all in real life either I you know I, I've got a, I live a really pure life 
Um, ask Tula. I'm sure Tula Tom um, would vouch for me on that. Um, yeah, I just I just don't swear ever. <laughs> oh, okay, let's see. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to find this book. So what we want to do. So this book was vintagehonda.com, was it? Oh my God, you guys have been lighting up the chat, man. Lighten up. The, yeah, vintagehonda.com. Okay, so let's go over to that. All right, let's check this out. All right, so this is the guru himself right here, huh? You meet the nicest people on a Honda in our guest room at our, in our house. I have uh, the, you meet the nicest people on a Honda. Um framed magazine ad. Okay, where is it? Restoration Guide Dream Download. This guy's brilliant. Oh my God, and I could get the one, oh, CLCB72. Yeah, so that's what I want right there. I want to order it now. Um, Patrick, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna download this tonight for sure. For sure. All right, so what's this guy? Need, oh, wow, do you got a question? Need help? Ask Mr. Honda. I do not normally sell parts, but can often help point you in the right direction. I do sell specific Honda restoration. Blah, blah, blah. Good for this guy. Good for this guy. Wow. Okay. Since the 1990s, I have written several restoration and repair guides for the 25305 engines and the blah, 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 which are available on print version only at the repair. Okay, so you can get a print version of these too? Let's take a look. I love manuals. Uh, below for details, my latest revised books available for digital download Dropbox, which covers all models. <clears throat> Complete engine repair. Superhawk restoration guide is available via digital download. Newly revised. Oh man. Oh shoot. Oh god. Okay, I'm gonna end the stream. I'm just gonna order this now because now I'm like, I'm like, okay, I want it. Okay, I don't want the dream. I want the super hot one. Where's the super hot one? I'll figure it out. Figure it out. Yeah, it said Super Hawk Dream. Restoration guide available. How, how, do, how do I blow things up? Ah, oh, wow, look at that. I just learned Windows. Newly revised, available via digital download. Newly revised edition, Super Hawk series, 192 pages, Honda Shop. Da, 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 da. Try the drop down menu. Try the drop down menu. CA77. CB77. 72 CB77 downloads. So that's got to be it. CB, yeah, this. Why are there two different options? Restoration guide purchase options. Restoration guide CB77 download. That would be it. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I'm excited, man. Patrick, thank you. I'm gonna grab that as soon as the stream's over. Michael Bloom, 69 Chevelle, you kinda need a different bike. My CL125 does 40, and while I technically could change the rear sprocket to make it faster, at the end of the day, it simply doesn't have the power. Yeah, I wouldn't want to take one of these little bikes on the interstate, like, at all. I, I have no intention of ever, <laughs> of ever running one of these bikes on the interstate at all. Okay, I need to bookmark that. I'm going to be back. I'm going to get that book. Dude. I hope, uh, Patrick, I hope you've ordered a sticker because I need to send you a thank you card. Um, let's see. Oh, right, let's go check out the, the Keep On Wrenching community group here real quick while we're here. Of course, more 
quick and double authentication. So I gotta go to my authenticator app and I gotta deal with all this crap. I get it, it's like better than you know the alternative, but it is a pain in the butt. 381. Those codes expire in like 10 seconds, so I'll try nothing. Come on, let me into the keep on wrenching group. I don't know how Facebook can get away with being so slow. There we go. There's the keep on wrenching group. Hundred and or four hundred and sixty-four members now. How cool is that? Aiden was in an hour ago. I didn't see him pop into the live stream. What's going on with that? Great news. Engine casing bolt hole decided it was gonna give up. <laughs> That's huge, dude. Congrats. He'll get some confetti when he opens that up. Ultrasonic day for Paul. This is all going into the ultrasonic for him. What kind of a carburetor is that? What are you working on there? Yeah, make sure you give us an after photo. Absolutely. Yeah, be a part. Go join the Keep on Wrenching community group on Facebook. Huge, huge group um, with just really cool people, man. Oh, profanity. Oh, you know, we got people doing all kinds of stuff. It's not just motorcycles or anything. Look at this. Pulled the engine out on this today. See, we both have the same hope and aspiration. That's a really cool bike. Pretty. Yeah, see, he's got a rear carrier on that pickup truck, and he's got enough ground clearance to pull it off. Just couldn't do that with my little Renegade. I just couldn't quite pull that off. Here's Doug, just got my 71 uh, CB350 engine on the bench. Thanks, Brian Matchin, for the lead on the lowbrow customs engine stand. Yeah, that thing, that thing really does help. Just keeps it from like being all topsy-turvy and falling all over the place. Absolutely. My pleasure, man. Go get it, Doug. Aiden, yeah, Aiden goes deep, man. Like, Aiden's fearless. This is what I've noticed from this guy. He is just all in. Aiden is, 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 I don't, he's, he goes, man, no fear. Uh, this guy is, is fearless. I think it's pretty incredible. Yeah, incredible. A uh, little Honda Twin Motors. And then I wanted to go and just look, because somebody did bring it up, I wanted to go and find the tragedy, in case you haven't seen this. Hey, everybody. Just wanted to do a little clear coat this morning on the Superhawk. Look at that save. That tank never touched the ground. I actually kicked it on the inside of the tank. Check it out, super slow-mo. Almost tragedy. Almost tragedy. I'm gonna watch that again. Hey everybody, <laughs> just wanted to do a little clear coat this morning on the Super Hawk. Look at that save. That tank never touched the ground. I actually kicked it on the inside of the tank. Check it out, super slow-mo. Almost tragedy. I love how that darn thing just like gongs. It just like gonged. <laughs> it's like, whoa, dude. Um, that was really, really lucky. Toe's fine. Toe, toe healed up. <laughs> We're all good. Yeah, man, it's like the worst feeling, man, when, they, when you're dropping fresh painted parts. Um, the, what part was it that I dropped? And it was just like, strip it and start over because it got dirt and sawdust and stuff all over it. It was like no big deal. Or no, not a good deal is what I wanted to say. Um, let's see. What are we going to work on? Oh, there's that beautiful motorcycle again. Okay, cool. All right. Back to work, everybody. Back to work. Uh, really only had the two projects really planned out for tonight. But this next one, I've actually really enjoyed doing this. And, yeah, I was just kind of look forward to, to doing this stuff. And it's installing piston rings. I actually really enjoy this. I don't mind it. So, 
Got these. These are both in really good shape. And we can dive right into these. So there they are. These have been ultrasonically cleaned. So they're really nice and clean. I don't really care. I mean, I could clean that all off, but it's all going to get dirty again anyway. I'm not that, you know, it is what it is. For the first time in my life, look at this. I did this this weekend. Or, yeah, this past weekend, I think I did this. I actually got all three of the original rings off without breaking them, including that Euler ring. The Euler ring. I didn't break the Euler ring. So that was, that was a huge win. Um, I always break the Euler. Um, I always break them. They, they're usually really, really fragile and they fall apart. But I got them. So yay win, right? Um, but I do have piston and I did get new rings and the rings were really hard to find. Um, the rings I ended up getting from Disaster Motors. Uh, they were in Canada and um, so it was Disaster Motors. God, I wish this darn thing would focus a little better. Come on, buddy. There we go. DisasterMotors.com. Um, they had them and uh, yeah, I feel really good about it. I looked at them, they look like they are the right deal. Really good service as well. Like clearly communicated. They're like, hey, yo, we see you're in the US. Um, these might take a little while to get there. Um, you know, and I was like, oh, that's cool, dude. I'm like so far away from like even dealing with them um, that it's no worries, don't worry about it. So if you need rings for a 305, they had them. They had them. It was really nice. So, got a new ring set. If I can open a package, there we go. And there's gonna be a few little pieces here to look at. A few little pieces to look at. All right. Hopefully I don't screw this up. So there is a silver ring. The silver ring, he had a note on the box saying the silver ring is the top ring. And I'm just looking to see if there's any sort of a marking on these. Yep, okay, top. So there's a top marking on this one. This one doesn't matter on the Euler ring. The Euler ring, so the original Euler ring is actually one piece. Let me see if I can grab this. So they came like this. And they're actually one piece to so like a sandwich kind of a thing. Kevy Kev, how are you, man? Giving up the body to save the tank. You got to do it. You got to do it, man. So you're probably not going to find these unless you go old new stock kits which the price is kind of ridiculous on. I'm trying to see if this one should have like a top marking on it. Looking carefully, because there, usually there is like a beveled edge on them. I'm looking very carefully, very, very carefully. It's chrome, so it's kind of hard to see. I think it's I think I think it says top right there. Yeah, it does. Wow. That is really hard to see, dude. I'll take a picture. I'll show you how hard that is to see. It does say top there. I'm going to take my photo camera out. How the hell I don't even know if this captured it. You can see you can barely see it, but it says top. It does say top, like right there. Can I get a better picture of that? That's, that was really hard. I'm glad I took the time to look at that. I can clearly see it now. I wonder if I turn my flash on, if that would help. That is so hard to see. 
think I got it that time. There you can see it. It says top. Transbred! Transbred is in the room. Hey everybody, yeah it does say top on that. Right there, so I can see top on my chrome ring. So your chrome ring is your top. And this one I can see top. So this is top ring, middle ring, and your oiler ring is basically three pieces. And I made a video on this. I think it's one of my better videos, honestly, is installing rings. I thought I did a good job on that. How are you, Trent? Good to see you, buddy. And so this is actually like split. You can see how it's like split. It's gonna rest right against itself when we get to that point. And it's gonna get sandwiched in between two of these smaller rings. There is no top or bottom on the Euler ring. You just put them together. And then the other thing to remember is when you're putting this all together is that you want to like space your gaps so you want to be doing like here's a gap and then take your another gap and move it to the other side so here's my other gap you can move that gap over there and you just don't want any gaps really on top of each other so you're just going to kind of build it out with your gaps all hanging out richard's in oh everybody's starting to roll in all the ogs are coming in now boys and girls this is fun this is fun all right so I do need to like focus, right? Because doing rings can go sideways really fast. And I don't want to order these again because I don't, they weren't cheap. They were like 40 bucks, 50 bucks. Too many bucks. So I'm actually going to grab a little stool. Uh oh. Oh. I just nuked my camera, so I gotta swap cameras here real quick. We'll fix that one later. Where's the other one? There it is, it's over on the bike. So I'll grab this one. Let's get in here. Uh, we got rain earlier, and then we've got a bunch of snow falling right now. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, they were expensive. They, they were spendy for such little things. For such little things, they are certainly very expensive. So I want to be able to work well. Steven's in. Um, Steven, this is the 305 for the Superhawk. 305 for the, oops, ah, for the Superhawk. That's what we're working on today. There's that Superhawk hanging out. It's okay, Richard, don't feel bad about it. I know, I know, man. It's the thought that counts, man. Life is busy, life's getting back to normal. And uh, yeah, we're all making transitions and stuff. So let's get rings installed. I'm gonna, actually, these are my keepers for my, for my valves. I need to put that over there. Since we're done with the valves, I'm not gonna install that stuff yet. I wanna wait till I get this digital download. All right. So, in order to do this, the best way that I've found to do this DIY are with these little plastic sleeves. So I just cut, like out of a, like a, a I don't remember what the hell it was. I think it was just like a, a pop bottle or something. I cut a bunch of little sleeves and these have done it for me. I've installed several sets now and this is like the easiest way for me to do it. Um, and, it's cheap. One, I didn't have to buy a separate tool, um, but the sleeves work really, really well. And the only other thing you're gonna need is kind of a little heavy duty rubber band in order to do this. So uh, we're gonna start, let's see. I wanna make sure I keep my tops right. Top, top, okay. Put those over there. And then we get started. So the Euler rings are usually pretty easy to put in, but the way that you kind of go about it is that you put one ring in and then you put kind of the waffly one in and then you put that waffly one on top because we're going to create this little pancake kind of a thing as, as we're doing this. It's a good idea to have your Marvel Mystery Oil um, kind of ready to go. It can help just to kind of lubricate things. 
Um, so here's kind of my approach is that I will grab my rubber band and I will put it around the piston. Okay. I will take a couple of my sleeves or three of them usually is kind of how I approach it. I'm going to take these sleeves like this kind of helps if you give them a little bit of a wiggle, you know, just to kind of get them in a little bit of rounded form. And these have been used a few times. They're starting to get kind of kinked up. So hopefully that's not a problem, but I'll just kind of create a little star just like that with these. And let's see, I feel good about that. So I'm going to just take more Marvel mystery oil and I'm just going to lubricate the sleeve just a little bit. Could have done this before anything else and also lubricate up the, everything. I just, just make it a slippery surface. This is just a good idea. So what I'm going to do first, double check, make sure that there's not a top or a bottom. I know on the 350s there's not a top or a bottom, but I just want to make absolutely sure that there's not any top or bottom on these. It does not look like there is or usually isn't. So what you can do here, yeah, it's so hard to do this on camera without my big paws getting in the way. It sounded like a little house on the prairie. Paw, paw. Why'd you have to shoot that horse paw? And then what I do is I just pinch these sleeves in. Sometimes you can lift them up, get them a little bit higher can help too. Do, 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 do. Just kind of pull those up. Get your ring. Let's see, try to get you centered on the screen here. Kind of pull those in, drop your ring on top. Because th these are pretty damn fragile to be quite honest. And they only get harder as you go. So these little sleeves will just guide it on. It can really help too, to make sure that you've got one set of sleeves kind of covering the gap on that ring as you do it too. And then what you can do, I'm trying to keep my hand out of the damn camera. It's really hard to do. Here, I need to reposition here. I just don't want to break them because it, it did take a little hot, it took a hot minute for me to get these. Um, and I don't want to be delayed like another month or so. I mean, I would love to have this motor ultimately put back together um, like soon, like <laughs> as soon as possible. Let's not run into, run into any, any issues. Steven, rained a lot here today. No snow, now snow, probably ice under the snow. Oh, it's totally going to be icy, miserable out um, for sure tomorrow. I, if you can stay home, I'd just stay home. Screw it. Don't mess around with ice. Ice is no good. See, my hand's getting in the way. I think I got a rotate camera angle here because I'm just getting in the shot. And that ain't no good because I think I'm going to be doing stuff like that more. Yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Let me get started. So let's get our first Euler ring, kind of loop it down, wrap it down. The Euler ring isn't super hard to get on. It's probably, the, these Euler ones are probably the most forgiving um, of all of them. And once you get to that top ring, that one can be a real bear cat. Oh my God, why is my body not functioning optimally right now? All right, and I'm trying not to keep my hand, I think that's what's killing me. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the damn camera. I'm not articulating the way I need to. So see how you can just like push it over the slide or over these little deals. Get it to where it goes. The Euler ring goes on the bottom. And then you can just use the slides to push that into position. And you're putting like super minimal pressure on that ring. So see how I can kind of move it, get it into position here. It's like that. And then what you can start doing is start pulling your sleeves out. So I can pull, hold that ring in place right here and start to pull that out. And that'll snap it right into place. And then you can just kind of work your way around it just like this. So here I'm gonna hold it over this Euler ring area. The Euler ring area is pretty clear because there's holes in the piston where the oil is gonna come gushing out. And you just want to keep it lined up. God, I hope you guys can see that. Push it in and then just pull your sleeve up just like that. And then your last one, 
usually pretty easy. Just kind of pull that, let it rock, and drop that in. And there's our first ring. So this is our bottom oiler ring that is in there now. Okay, so that's our lower one. Um, just keep track of like where your gaps are. So here's your, your gap. So when I, I, when I install this piece, this is kind of the waffly piece. This one actually has a break in it. See that? It's actually in two pieces. We need to put this one in. This one, you probably don't even need the sleeves because it's got quite a bit of give in it. The thing that you really want to pay attention to is that you don't want uh, this small stuff. I'm doing all this small stuff today. Um, is you don't want to like overlap. How can I show this? Like you don't want to overlap the two pieces. They need to butt right up against each other. They need to butt right up against each other. They shouldn't like overlap in any way. And that's kind of the trickiest part is to get it laying in there um, without. So this is going to drop in right on top of my first Euler ring that we just installed. Probably don't need the sleeves for this because it is a pretty flexible piece. I'm going to go ahead and drop that end in, work it around. And then as I drop this in, um, I should be able to do this. Actually, your light is better from the other side, isn't it? And when I'm filming from the other side. So for your viewing pleasure, I just need to get used to it. All right, because I want you guys to see this stuff. Okay, it's not about my comfort. It's about your enjoyment. So here's that other end of that oiler right up here. And we just need to make sure that it doesn't overlap and it butts right up against the other one. Okay, so there's that first one in. And now what we gotta do, and this can be a little bit tricky, is we gotta get this the top piece of the Euler ring on top. We gotta get this one put in, into there, okay? So before I do that, I'm, I'm gonna just calm my nerves a little bit. Because I really don't want to, uh, I don't wanna, I do not wanna break a ring tonight. I'd be very, very disappointed in myself if I if I did that because I'm already I'm already going pretty deep budget wise on Super Og man it's um, it's uh, not a concern but it's just kind of like damn I just keep running across little things that are like I should fix that I should probably fix that and then I'm just gonna try to keep track of like where my gaps are. So let's see, yeah, there's one, my one gap is over here, right there. And then my Euler ring gap is right here. So they're a little close actually. I'm just gonna turn this bottom one back a little bit. Now those are separated a little bit better. And now I can go ahead and this is kind of the tricky one. I'm gonna move over here, make sure my gap is over here. It's like this is plastic sleeves, man, super cheap, and they work. They go in like this, and my, my slides are still pretty, pretty greasy. Ugh. Ugh. You know, gloves are a wonderful thing, but gloves are also super freaking annoying sometimes, because sometimes you just can't grab things. You know, you're just like, oh, I just need to like grab this, but everything's like slippy sliding around, getting all goofy on you. Come on, come on, there we go. So I'm gonna go around here, just make sure I didn't spin this around so I'm on my gap. And then we can go ahead and try to do this again. Try to keep your, your gap, like the gap in the ring. Here's the ring and the gap right here. Try to keep that over one of the plastic pieces if you can. And we're just gonna start pushing this on. Oh, my hand again is in the way, but I don't care because I've gone too far at this point. See how I've got this over up on the plastic here just a little bit. I want to guide that down and grab that. So see how I've got the two ends of it up on the plastic like that. Now there's like just enough tension in it to where I can pull it down onto the piston these aren't going to hang me up because they're not going to slide into the spot. And then here's where we need to get really specific with where these drop in. These need, oh, Jesus, these need to, I need to raise the camera because it's really uncomfortable for me here. Um, this needs to drop down right above 
the oil or ring that or the the waffle piece i'm trying to keep it as straight as possible as i come through here once you get it started it usually goes pretty smooth but what i like about the plastic sleeves is that then here i can just slide it over once it's kind of in position Let's see if i can do this live stressful Got a little low over here i'm going to just move my plastic ring just a little bit and get that to drop in and that dropped in right where i needed it and then we're just going to work our way all the way around so a little bit oh god i want you guys to see this but i also just don't want to mess it up um, i'm going to pull this up and that's going to drop on just like that okay and then let's roll it around we can get another one so you can just pull that sleeve up right here uh, oops see there i almost lost it pull that back I'm trying to hold it this guy it's hard to shoot this man make sure it goes on the top there we go and then we can rotate it around so this other end of that ring is still on on there yeah it's totally like a sandwich dave totally and now i can just like start to rotate this out pull it and there we go so there is our top and bottom that is all put together or there's our top and bottom rings installed on the oiler so there we go that is a beautiful thing to see excellent okay the next step all right so then they're just going to get progressively harder from here to be quite honest like what were we working on the last time and it was like hey this is just going to get harder and harder and harder as we go God, what video or did I make a video about something where I was saying that I was like it's just gonna get harder as we keep going and that is definitely the case here I don't even remember what did we work on last time I don't even remember trying trying to get these things to like kind of a mold to the surface really helps and get them standing up a little bit so you got a lot of flex that can help too I'm gonna just kind of re-lube stuff get stuff moving nice and free this marble mystery oil man this stuff is incredible okay so what we're going to do is the chrome ring oops chrome ring is the top ring um kind of the black it's kind of a black with a silver edge that's going to be your middle ring and just remember man look for the top look look it's going to be marked with something on the top edge of it i had a heart attack i was putting in rings um uh, what bike um oh yeah the the up bike and i put this ring on and i was like did i did i even look to see if that was same top so i was like oh god i don't want to have to take that ring off because i'm probably going to break it but I was able to look at it closely and see. So my top is like this. Oh. What I need is like an overhead camera for this. I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna slide my sleeves over and we're just gonna start working this. Again, remember getting the, the gap over one of them is really the key. And then what we can do is we can start using those yeah, I forgot, these do get progressively harder as you go through it. But you can just keep it against the sleeves. And then see, it's like now I'm over it all the way around and I didn't have to really pull on it. I only had to like push on it to get it, get it in, into that spot. So here, this is actually cool that, that's, that this actually happened. Um, one of my ends fell off of that when I moved it over that actually isn't the end of the world because we can move this, we can move the other slider over to pull that up. 
right? So again, you don't have, you can put like minimal pressure on that ring as you're working through it. So now I just move my, my little plastic piece over. Ah, and now I've got it both locked in over here and I've still got one in the back that I can work with to, to rock and roll with. So no harm, no foul on that. On the back side, I'm gonna pull this down. This goes in the middle gap. So all the way around, I'm just gonna kind of get it loosely lined up on the middle gap on the, on the piston. I'm gonna pull that one down and like this. So then here, I can see right there, it's in there. I can just pull this sleeve out and keep this, oh my God, it's so hard to show you this without getting my big fingers in the way. And bam, and that's in there. This one, bring this one back around. I've got my gap right here. And it looks like it popped in on the back side already, so I can just literally pull that one out, and that's in. I really, really, really like um, the, this method of doing it. It puts the least amount of tension on the uh, on 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 the uh, on the whole situation here. So it doesn't bend anything. You're not like contorting anything. It's perfect. So we got one more to go. Back to the rubber bandy. I'm gonna install my sleeves again. Yeah, we'll go a little high on these. This last one can be kind of a booger. But we'll be okay. Like, this might not seem like the, the most like thrilling live stream ever, but this is actually a really big pivotal kind of a moment in this bike, in this particular bike build, because it's getting there, you know? Is it getting there? So now we got our chrome ring. I'm gonna look, I can clearly see that it says top on this. Now that I know where it is, I can totally see it. Yep, confirmed. And what I'm going to do, center my gap on one of these rubber pieces and see if we can get it to play nice with us here. It's over, it's over. It's in place. I'm going to pull that down just into our one little spot. <laughs> We'll, 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 we can look at the, at all that. It's going to be fine. Pull this over. So here I can pull this. Come on, bike. Just like that. Snap that on. Let's grab this other end. Snap that on. Then we can just pull these other two sleeves. And we should be good. That's going to drop. And then here I'm just going to pull that on there like that. There we go. As long as you want to make sure you keep all of these gaps staggered. And that's going to be ready to rock. There's our rings. There's one in, one done, baby. Bada bing, bada boom. That's pretty cool, I can't wait. Cause these are all gonna get compressed too when they go into that, into that cylinder, you know? So they're all gonna be in there. Feeling good, feeling good about that. Euler ring right there. Good, good. Click. <sighs> okay, one down. That is exciting. I do have, just so you know as well, I did keep, so the original wrist pin, I kept that. That came with this piston. So I'll be matching that together um, once it all goes back together. 
Go ahead, just keep it all together. I've got my wrist pins and my clips and everything in a bag ready to rock. So that actually went really, really smooth. That went really smooth. So we've done pistons and or one piston and we've done all our valves tonight. That's a, that's actually not bad progress. Not bad progress. All right, so we got these rings. Got this, and again, on this one too, I got all of them out. I got all the old rings out without breaking them. Couldn't freaking believe, couldn't believe that. So let's install these. So it can be done, ladies and gentlemen, it can be done um, that you can install these things without, or, or take rings out without breaking them all. I think Tula, when you when Tula Tom took his pistons or he gave me a bunch of extra parts, he had like all his rings. And I was like, how the hell did you get that out without breaking it? It can be done. He proved it. He proved it. That it can be done. Yes, I believe so. Dave, one, two, three. Let's go like this. It's too late, I'm going for it. It's a tangled up mess. What is going on here? Why are these all hooked together like this? Thank you, go away, go away. There. Now we gotta find the stupid top mark again. Okay, this one was much easier to see than that other one. That other one was not easy. There's top, top. So let's go ahead. Let's install these bad boys now. Let's get it. Slide this mother on there. God damn, two and a half hours already? Night's flying by, guys. Night is flying by. First one's always the easiest one. First oiler is going in. Oops, sorry, 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 sorry. I did, Dave. I did. Yep, I did. It all looked good. It all looked good. That was like the first thing I did once I got them off in one piece. And that was, I was also really happy that I was able to get them off in one piece because of that. So I could actually compare those. And they looked fine to me. Just gonna get this oiler on or the waffle. I don't know what the hell it's called, but get that one on just like that. I'll use the sleeves again on this one. I just wanna be super careful. I don't wanna break them. We should be okay. I wonder how much snow we have outside right now. God, how much shoveling am I gonna have to do tomorrow? <clears throat> I have this one neighbor who sometimes will like, just out of the kindness of his heart, will just like plow me out. Like I'll just wake up in the morning and it'll be like all plowed and I'll be like, angels. You know, guy's freaking awesome. Just like, oh my God, dude, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Just gotta get these lined up. I love uh, these sleeves. I think these work. I don't know why they just don't like sell this as a kit that 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 people could buy. Maybe I should just start selling piston ring installation kits. It's just getting them lined up. That's the hardest part on the second ring. There we go. Got it. We're flying. We're flying. I gotta slow down though. Like sometimes on stream, I uh, I definitely rush through some stuff. I'm very like I'll think about stuff after, and it's like, oh, but I was streaming, you know. And I was like, oh, I just gotta keep the pace up. Gotta keep it going. And sometimes that can be a bad thing for me. Bam. And one more. Come on, baby. Get in there. Get in the car. Yeah. Cubo, get in the car. 
Mm -hmm. Taking a look here, making sure all of my different gaps are lining up. Or not lining up is what I should say. And that Euler ring, that looks good. Oh, actually, those two are right on top. So, like, I had the, the gap in the waffle, or the, the break in the waffle in the top ring. We're almost right on top of each other. Definitely don't want that. Um, rotate this, so I'll just grab these other two and kind of move it around. Perfect. Perfect. That should be good. I feel good about that. Okay, now this other ring... Two more to go. Let's see if we can have another victory tonight. I could go for another victory tonight. Top. I'm checking to make sure I got top on here. Oh, classic octate is good. Um, I just like, I don't know, um, i trying to think like who I watch the most. Like, who, do I, who am I watching the most? I'm trying to think. Um, there's one dude with a mustache from freaking Europe. Um, what is his, the name of his channel? He does like live chats and stuff too. I really like his stuff. Um, ah, what the hell's his name? I feel bad that I'm not going to be able to remember his name. Ah, I just knocked my rubber band off. You know who's kind of fun to watch, and it has nothing to do with wrenching, um, is um, Itchy Boots. She like does like touring on. She was riding a Honda there for a while. Um, Itchy Boots channel. That's she's she's kind of fun. She does a really nice job. Tells good stories. Tells good stories. I always like a good story to go along with something. Itchy Boots is kind of fun, but that's more like adventure, touring kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I'm still a sucker for every time uh, Common Motor comes out with a new video for sure. I mean, I'm definitely watching most of those. Um, Motorcycle MD, he's pretty good. I, I'm such a stickler because I really only care about Honda stuff. You know, like, if it's not really an old Honda, I'm really not that interested in it. So, I guess maybe I'm a little bit of a snob that way. I'm just like, oh, it's not an old Honda. I don't, I don't really care. Like, I don't really get into the, the channels with, like, the new bikes. Like, the new bikes don't really do much for me. Unless it's, like, a Himalayan. Then, because I, I do have a little bit of a flirtatious, a flirtation going on with the, with the Himalayans right now. I would like to grab one of those one day, maybe. If life offers the opportunity. All right, so I'm just making sure I'm in my middle ground here. Bam. Oh, sorry, you're getting a lot of my hands, but I'm just kind of trying to get this done and move on. There's that. There we go. There's that one. Euler. Top, just like that. Beauty. And we do one more. Top, just like that. <sighs> Motor was Motorcycle MD gone for a while? They they were doing a tandem live stream for a while that I thought was kind of fun. Live stream live streams are are, are kind of tough though um, because you you just you got to be on you got to keep their schedule. I couldn't imagine like trying to coordinate with like another person to make a YouTube channel or a YouTube live stream or something work. I, I would think that would be very difficult. Because then, then you're dealing with, with two people who have life happening, you know? 
<sighs> well, yeah, what was up with Motorcycle MD? I didn't hear that anything was going down. All right, double check my top. There's my top. Let's get it on. Ugh. I always get nervous on the last ring because it's like, you've come this far, you've averted disaster, and now you're just trying to get through the day, you know, without breaking it. Come on, baby. There we go. Look at that little pull. Oh, I had it. I had it. And you guys are like seeing my hands, which cannot be enjoyable for you. So let me give you a little change of scenery on that. Grab my rubber band, get that up a little higher. This one's tricky, man. This this last one is a tricky one. It's tight. And you got to get a little aggressive with it on this back side and you gotta get it over the hump. Got it over the hump, there we go, there we go. Okay, so that is along the edge there. Got it on the edge. And then, see if I can pull this out. And my hands are so oiled, oiled up right now. No, 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 no. Stay where I want you to go. My hands keep slipping off this damn thing. Might have to go bareback here. There we go. There, I think I get it. For some reason, I have uh, Chantilly lace in my head now. There we go. That one went. Sorry, I'm kind of off camera. Just trying to get this going. Drop that on there like that. Boom. Boom. And slide this off. Bam. Got it. Just like that. That wasn't too painful. That wasn't too painful at all to get that, that put together. Make sure my gaps are all staggered. Everything's freely moving, no binds. Feel good? Yahoo! Feeling good. Biker bits, that's a new one to me. Adventure riding. Cody at Motorcycle MD has some health problems. Oh no, I didn't know that. Oh. I like the Broken Moto show he was doing with Matt Houchy. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about, Dave, the, the Broken Moto show. I thought that was a lot of fun. I, I thought that was, that was really cool to see those two guys teaming up on that. I didn't know that about Motorcycle MD. Um, that sucks. Because um, when I was first getting into, in, into bikes, um, like my first one, like when I was rebuilding my 70 CB350, I leaned on a lot of his content, actually. Um, I learned quite a bit from that guy. Or continue to learn. Um, wow, that sucks. I hope he's, I hope he's uh, doing better. If he's back, hopefully he's doing better. That sucks. He's part of the crew, man. He's part of like the motorcycle culture of YouTube. You know, these little plastic sleeves, man. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Musty one is great. Don Horn. Yeah, Brickhouse Builds is working on a lot of like the newer stuff though. Um, like just some of the bikes that he's built, like his videos are incredible. Um, it's like some of the, the, the videos though, or the bikes that are featured on the channel, they, they, they're just not things that I'm like, oh wow, that's really cool. <clears throat> but when he was, he was working on something, I forget what he was working on, but I watched, watched those, but then it gets a little new and I'm like, eh. I'm such a I'm such a vintage snob. I'm just gonna take these old rings and put them in the box, keep them protected, because you never know. 
never know when somebody might need, or something might go down, we might need a set of rings. These are still some life in these. So just might as well save them. Who else? Biker bits. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure I've seen it, but I don't know. I'm not, that one's not ringing a bell. Not sure. I'm trying to buy, I can't believe <clears throat> RCC Restoration or RRC Restoration. That's a pretty good one. Um, actually, I'll put these back in the bag. What would you guys like to see on the live stream? Like, what would make the live stream more entertaining for you? Because, honestly, the live kind of hanging out with you. Um, it's kind of like, you know, kind of social time for me um, to where I get to just kind of hang out with some people. But if any of you have any ideas for things you'd like to see on the live stream, I mean, by all means, just let me know and see if we can make something like that happen. But, you know, I can only, you know, do so much, right? So, but I do enjoy the live streams. I look forward to them. I like, uh, like hanging out and just kind of hearing from people and seeing what people are doing. Yeah, classic Octane. He, he has some really, really cool, cool, cool builds um, for sure. Oh my God, it's incredible stuff. They're just not like the bike sometimes aren't what kind of turns my crank. You know, I really love making things like just how they were, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, they like vintage snob. I'm not judging them at all. In fact, I can learn a lot from them. Um, it's just like sometimes like, especially with newer bikes and stuff, it's just not, a lot of it's just not like applicable to what I'm, what I'm doing over here. <sighs> okay. What's the next little deal? And I could do one small little project tonight. What time is it? Oh, we're going on 11 o'clock Eastern time. Um, what I think I want to do actually is tackle this thing. This has been staring me in the face for a while. And that's that cam chain tensioner. It's freaking filthy. Um, what did I do with my super clean? There it is. And it just needs to be cleaned. I love this stuff, man. I, I, th this stuff is incredible. I love super clean. Sometimes you can just shoot dirt right off of stuff. Um, a lot of times with aluminum, a little bit of super clean and um, just like a brass brush is really all you need on some of this. So, ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo. so it's like super clean, just like it just kind of melts that grease right out. It leaves a pretty nice little surface. Like, look at that. I just scratched it and now it's like shiny or it's getting shiny. If you can kind of just disturb the surface a little bit, that would be good. Actually, in order to properly clean this part, I should actually just make a quick template I think that would be important to do. Dave, I had a modern bike for a year, a 2017 Moto Guzzi. I sold it to make room for another vintage bike. Yeah, I just like the vintage bikes. I like the old bikes. I've been watching, um, there's this one Russian guy who does restoration videos. I, I would say I probably watch more restoration videos than anything. And it, it could be restoring, you know, anything. Um, I really like one called Scout Crafter. Um, Scout Crafter is a really cool channel. I'm just going to make a quick template for this cam chain tensioner. I don't, I, the, the bolts on this are of different lengths. So I just want to make sure... I get these all in the right spot. That's all. Well, it'll make it a lot easier to clean if I'm not holding on to all the little bolts. So just making myself a quick little template that I can plug some bolts into. 
And that will be my cam chain tensioner bolts. Cause like there's like a weird little wire guide or a hose guide of some kind right here. This will make me feel better. This is kind of a, like having these bolts hanging out here has kind of been slowing me down from giving a crap about this cam chain tensioner. So I was right tensioner. Just like that. Now I can kind of go to town here cleaning a little bit. I get, I'd like to take that slide out if I can. Looks like a 10 mil to me. I let that super clean just kind of hang out for a little while. There we go. Yep. So this is very similar to the 350. There must be a little notch in this. Oh, sorry guys. Just going to take this out. So this slider will come right out. Yep. Perfect. Loosen this a little bit more. I'm going to take a quick picture of this as well, just because it could be a week or so before I get back to any of this. Well, a week or so. <laughs> Famous last words. Probably be two months from now before I get back into this. Mm -mm -mm. Taking lots of pictures, making sure it's all right. Boom. Because it'd be nice to be able to treat the, that wheel. There we go. That just pulls apart. And that is going to allow me to really get in on this. Easy. There's a little slot in this, it looks like. So it's kind of impossible um, to put that together incorrectly. It only goes one way. Now we can get back and like freely start to clean. Yeah, these little rubber pieces, I think I'm definitely going to treat some of this stuff for show. Well, we got to get looks. Terrell fixes all. Yeah, he's a laugh for sure. Yeah, he's good. I actually have learned quite a bit of like just small engine stuff from Terrell, which is always good. Help me fix my uh, snow blower. Be like, oh shoot, that's what it is. Got it. I'm on it. I was able to fix it. Just scrapping, scraping off this old, gross grease. As I just like sprayed my beer. God, I hate that when I do that. Hmm. Maybe there's some vitamins in there. Brass brush on aluminum. There's a lot of nooks and crannies on this darn thing. But super clean will do a great job of kind of loosening it all up. Again, if I can get this clean, I don't have to paint it. So that's one of my motivations. Because if I can get it all looking with like a consistent finish, an original finish on the motor, I'll just leave it. I'm not going to paint it. I ain't going to paint it. That's some thick stuff on here, man. Why would that, why would it be so filthy right there? Like on that side, it's, it's protected. It's like under the carbs. This is like the dirtiest part of this motor that I've cleaned yet. Insane. I don't understand how this would get so dirty. I'm gonna just pull this bolt out. Just get it all the way out of there. Get it out of the way. This is that adjuster nut, uh, bolt with the locker on it. There we go. Boop. 
Now we can really get into the business on this. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I probably won't have to paint this. Yeah, man, we are so close to 10,000 subs, man. I, hopefully, like by the end of the stream tonight, we get a few new subs. If you haven't subbed, please do that. Um, so I'm going to be like 200 away. So that could mean like, you know, in the next month or so, we might actually get to that 10,000 mark, man. That's been just kind of like a weird little goal of mine. Aside from getting like watch time up on videos, it's just like, it's a super vanity number for sure. But, and this stuff is thick and annoying. But look at how nice that's cleaning up. I, I mean, if I just keep on working this a little bit, I don't think I need to repaint it. I'll just go put it back together. Nice, clean, original finish. Yes, please. I take it. I take it. Oh my God. That is some caked stuff, man. Even the super clean is struggling with this. Yeah, man, you guys blowing up the chat tonight, man. I'm, I'm, I think I'm having a hard time keeping up to all of it. I see. Musty is great. Musty one. I don't think I'm familiar with musty one. All right, so then winter green and alcohol to try and treat this cam chain tensioner a little bit. I have no winter green. <laughs> that reminded me of They Live. Come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. I'm all out of bubblegum. <laughs> yeah, look at that. That's not too bad. So kind of to finish this off, the a, uh, a 3M pad or a clean 3M pad, a little cleaner one, um, does a nice job. Like a little soap and water on a 3M pad will work just fine. Yeah, I don't know, man. This, you know, I've seen other cam chain tensioners, and this one looks like chewed up ones. This one does not look chewed up at all. That's true, David. That's that's actually really true. A dirty engine is probably good for preserving it a little bit, so it's not all shit, all uh, oxidized. Very good point. So it's good that it's dirty. Yeah. Boom. That is just the. I mean, you guys just saw it, man. It, this was all just degreased. Like that was it. That's all I did. Like, I think that is, let me see, yeah. I think that's worthy of going back on the bike. I don't think I need to really dick around with this anymore. That looks beautiful. I think the only thing I want to do is I want to treat this rubber for sure. I want to, I want to try to get it a little bit more supple again. And again, if any of you watching know, like know what the, what the deal is with finding new cam chain tensioner rollers for a 305, please let me know because I've run out of Google ideas. The other one is there is a little roller down in here. Let's see. Right here, there's a little roller. This is a rubber roller as well. I may take this one out as well and treat that as well. That's the plan. That's kind of what I'm thinking anyway. Kind of what I'm thinking anyway. Right, Jacko? I mean, it's good enough. I think that's good. And that's just cleaning it. So, like, I, I can't justify, like, going and painting it. 
and doing all that. I think it looks great. That's an original piece. It's got the original paint. It's fine. In fact, I, I think some people would probably appreciate it more if I left it that way. You know, they'd be like, why are you ruining in that? Why are you painting that, man? It looks good. That's the original paint, you know? So I'll probably just leave it. Cool. Oh, man, it just keeps going and going and going and going and going. But the end prize is going to be pretty damn sweet. You know, this end prize of this bike running again is going to be incredible. Going to be incredible. All right. Let's put this back on the bike so it stays safe so we don't have an accident. There we go. There she be. Looks pretty damn cool. Doesn't that look nice? It's gonna look so freaking cool. Let's see, let's put one of the side covers on it too. Let's play dress up a little bit. Gotta get some wire ties or something in here. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, yep, got some wires hanging out that don't really belong there. There we go. Boop. 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 <laughs> How fun is that? How fun is that? That's going to look freaking cool. Is it going to look sweet? Is it going to look sweet? It's going to look sweet, man. I'm still trying. The one thing, hey, man, I, ho I hope... Um, Patrick, I don't know if Patrick's still around or not, but the one part that is just puzzling me, and I hope that manual freaking tells me about it, is this freaking rear brake pedal, man. This rear brake pedal is really, it's blowing my mind. I don't even understand what the hell's going on with it as far as it, I don't understand how it works from here. I don't understand how it goes back on the bike. I've watched my disassembly video probably about 40 times trying to figure out how the hell that thing actually mounted and went to that. And like, no, no dice. I have no idea. <laughs> I need somebody to explain that to me. That would be freaking wonderful. But there it is, 1967 CB77 with a 1964-ish, I'm guessing, front end. Because it does have, uh, after tearing this all down and stuff, it's, it's got the early set of forks on it which kind of matches to the story of it, um, is that it got ran into a garage. And then, you know, who knows what happened after that, but I think it got rebuilt um, with a front end off of an earlier bike, because I think the, the front of it was probably pretty bad. I think, yeah, David, as far as I can tell, um, everything on the lower end of the motor um, looks fine. Um, I actually scoped it the other night. And I took a bunch of pictures, had a little bit of a jump scare, a little bit where I thought I saw a bunch of stuff in the bottom of the engine, but it ended up, it was just reflection from the light. Everything is operating smoothly. Um, as far as I can tell, um, we should be good. <laughs> um, I have no indications that, that it's bad. I do have all new seals for this engine. I've probably got 15 or 20 different seals um, that I can put into it. So I'll be able to get a good look at it, at a lot of this stuff as I'm doing the seals. You can see the lower bearings. I'm trying to find you the best light possible. You know, here's kind of how this is all looking. Man, if you guys do see something off, I mean, let me know. But I'm kind of at the point right now where I'm just going for it. I'm gonna get it done. Let's get it running. If it breaks, we can uh, do something about it. But everything looks really, really, really strong to me. Um, 
yeah, I'm, I'm optimistic to say the least. I mean, even though when you look down into some of these different ports inside of here, I wish that I would have never taken this side apart like I did, because I think that that's a big puzzlement for me. I've got one big gasket surface here to clean up. Um, I could have just probably gotten away with doing the clutch basket, um, but I got a little exploratory one night and may have gotten a little bit ahead of myself um, in taking all that stuff. Jacko, gonna call it a night, folks. It's been a long day. Happy Friday in advance. Thanks to BV Matson for streaming. Really enjoyed and learned some things too. Thanks, man. Jacko, thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Um, we'll see you again on the next stream. Enjoy. Happy Friday. Indeed, we're getting real close. It's like probably an hour away from Friday for me. Thanks, Jacko. Have a good day. I'm getting close to calling it here, too. Um, this is another gasket surface that I need to clean up. One more that I got to deal with. So far, it's been a lot of this. Like right here, I just run my finger across it and gaskets are popping off of this thing. It's not too bad. But this is an important one. This one has to be really nice and clean and perfect. Let's look at the cover. Let's see, it's this one. Do, 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 do. Trying to remember this one. Yeah, this cover right here is gonna go onto that. This one, yeah, okay, I already cleaned this one. So this gasket surface is good to go. Rocking and rolling. Oh God, it would look so nice. Oh, oh God, <laughs> it would look so nice polished though, wouldn't it? But I think I am gonna end up painting these. Yeah, this one light is, it's a little too bright. I think a little too much, man. Oh, what if I can do that? Does that help? No, it's just bright. <laughs> That's just what this thing is. This new light that I got is just super bright, but it is what it is. Um, the other thing too, I don't know if anybody in here is familiar with 305s. Again, this is the first 305 that I've done. Thanks, Robert. Uh, thanks, thanks, man. I'm trying the best I can <laughs> on it. I'm trying to get her to come around. It's been a process. I think I started it in September, so I feel like I'm making really good progress. The other thing, I was looking oh, down in here on the bottom side of this. There is going to be this oil. There's an oil screen inside of there. This is the oil, I think, was it the oil pump? Uh, I, again, I'm learning about these motors all the time. Uh, just reading about it whenever I can. But I have seen people take these out and then you can really see what's going on um, underneath there. I'm not ready to do that yet. Cause it's, it's literally guys, it's like literally I'm doing research before I do everything. You know, each little thing that I do, I'm like, hmm, what's this all about? What's this doing? You know, how's this work? And then trying to figure it out, you know, as I, as I go here, cause this is new, this is all brand new stuff to me so just keep this thing kind of hanging out there but yeah this is the last barrier quite honestly the barrier is that to get that in that and have that thing running by may 1st that's my goal may 1 baby can we do it may 1 i think i think it's doable i think it's doable i think i can do it David. Well, that makes me feel better. Thanks for saying that, David. Honda lower ends never seem to wear out. I hope not. And it's free moving. Like you can turn everything on it. It feels good, but it's about getting that and that together again. You know, like everything feels good. You know, everything's seating, things turning. As far as I can tell, I don't see it. There was nothing in the bottom end of it. It felt good. Everything looked good. So that's kind of where I'm at. Still yet to like crack a bottom end of a motor properly, you know, to really go for it. Haven't done that yet. And I'm hoping this ain't the bike that I got to do that with. So good stuff. 
This has been a fun stream. Uh, people have been hanging out and popping around. Um, if you haven't already, man, make sure you do hit up that keeponwrenching.com uh, website um, because uh, I'm going to be doing getting those stickers out this weekend. As soon as uh, the envelopes arrive, um, I'll be doing that. So there's a little request form down at the bottom. Free stickers are available. Request your free sticker here. If you'd like to support the channel, um, f please feel free. Um, to head on over to the store, look at t-shirts, mugs, hats, all that stuff. Every little bit helps. Everything goes right back into the channel. Um, it's just a lot of fun. Um, you can also, there's a little, uh, the wish list isn't for me. Just so you know, the Amazon wish list isn't for me. The Amazon wish list features the products and stuff that I'm, that, that I'm using here, kind of for a reference for you. Um, so you can click on some of that and see it. Um, we, I've been working my way through some freaking motorcycles, man. I am excited to say that the 1967 Honda CA77 Dream, um, I got the title transferred and I got the title in the mail yesterday. So that baby is officially light, or titled to me. How cool is that, right? So I'm, I am the owner of a Dream and that's going to be coming up. Here's that Super Hawk when we got it, CB100. Weird story behind the the CB100. I'll talk to you about that some other time. I don't feel like getting into it now, but yeah, just weirdness trying to get that thing titled. Um, this one, I, again, I can't get the 74 Scrambler um, titled until it's done, <laughs> which is dumb. But here's the three that I've completed so far. The 70 CB350 Super Sport, the Scrambler, and then the other. So I've done three 350s basically. And now this uh, Super Hawk is kind of the next one on deck. In the future, I mean, the, the next kind of projects are going to be the, the Dream will be a big one that we'll be working on. And then I want to do the 68 CB350. Um, so that's the blue one. I don't know if I can get the tank very easily. Um, but uh, the, the 68, 68 CB350 and the Dream are going to be the, the two next two after I get the Super Hawk and the 125S done. So once those are out, those will be replaced with those projects. I think it'll be a good time. All right. So I do have to, again, thank Patrick. Uh, Patrick, thank you so much for supporting the channel tonight with a monster super chat. Fired off that Jack Bauer emoji. I love me some Jack Bauer. I love myself a little bit of 24. Actually watched the series over and over and over again. It's just a great show. Uh, but Patrick did me a real solid tonight. Um, first, he was just going to send me a free digital copy of a, of a manual for this that I really think I'm going to need. Um, he couldn't find that, so then he donated money for me to be able to go to the person who wrote the book um, to be able to do that. And that actually makes me feel even better because I want to support uh, content creators and stuff like that. So I don't want that book for free anyway. I'd love to do that. Um, just support him because he wrote this book that's freaking amazing. So Patrick, thanks so much for firing off the Jack Bauer emote tonight. Um, that's huge. Absolutely huge. And no exaggeration, that book is probably going to be the book that gets this bike or this bike <laughs> uh, across the line because I am really struggling to find resources for this thing. It's really hard to find really good resources to get this bike put back together. Doug, thanks, BV Matson. Enjoyed the evening, learned a lot. Awesome, dude. Uh, I, had, I had a blast tonight. I'm energetic, feeling really good. Um, not super tired. I'm actually more hungry than anything, so I gotta get myself a little bit of food, get myself cleaned up, and then get through Friday. But yeah, Doug was in, David was in, Robert was in, Jacko was hanging out with us for a while tonight as well. I mean, it's all the usual suspects. Dave, Jacko, Don Horn was in. Um, let's see, Steven, he was in. Richard Haynes, dude, good to see you. I'm glad you showed back up. Uh, Michael Bloom, Trent's bread. Trent was quiet tonight. Trent's usually really, really kind of boisterous and getting into stuff. He didn't really do anything. Kevy Kev was in, good to see him. Uh, Pat was in. Uh, happy with the engine stand. Who else is in here? Patrick, of course. Can't thank you enough, dude. That's that's like such a solid. That's awesome. Oh, you won. Uh, Doc Jones Garage, uh, 69 Chevelle. Uh, Nick James was in. Oh, man, I love seeing all these names coming back. You, you know, every, every live stream. Tom Foley was in. Um, going through here. Tula Tom. Tula Tom was in, of course. Um, let's see who else is coming in here. Da, 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 da. Chris Stone, Paul WV came in tonight. 
uh, Daniel came in. Uh, what was it? Well, he's waiting for a sticker. I got to check to make sure that I get his sticker out to him and make sure he's in the batch that's going out this weekend. Again, if you haven't gotten your uh, or requested your sticker yet, um, please go do that at keeponwrenching.com. Those will be going out uh, probably on Monday. Um, and if you haven't got your sticker yet and you ordered it in the last month and a half or two months, I think it was December 20 something, I think that I sent them out last. Um, don't worry, they're in there. If I've got your information, it's going to be in the pile. So this has been fun, guys. I'm going to kind of clean up a little bit, chill out. I was thinking about doing an after hours kind of a stream, like a, 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 a stream after the live stream. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? You think that'd be kind of cool? Um, that would be like, um, you know, maybe like the OGs or whatever. I don't know. Just trying to do it. Oh, Michael Bloom, so close to 10,000 subs. We're going to have to do something special once we hit the 10,000 subs mark. So if you want to help me get there, I mean, just share the channel, get the channel out there. Um, you know, don't just share it just for the sake of sharing it. If you think the channel can help somebody in a particular thing, share that channel. We're so close. It's going to be 200. Where's my phone? I'll, I'll check it right now just to see. Um, we're really, really close. Really close. Uh, doo, doo, doo. We are at 97.95. So we need 205. 205 subs and we're at 10,000. And that is way bigger than I ever thought this channel would ever get. So, um, and I thank you all for that. So, all right. I'm going to take a swig of coffee. And I'm going to clean up this shop and get ready for work tomorrow. Um, thanks so much for being here. I think we accomplished a lot. And just one piece at a time, moving on through the process. So, um, yeah, thanks, everybody. And uh, I'll see you in the next video or live stream. Have a great night and an awesome weekend.